Mr. Brent Murphy. Brent Murphy. Once again, our first class as we open up the market. Have first class one, weight range 571 to 613. On the other side of the show ring, this is Division Three Championship. First and seconds in the ring from classes 12 through 17 with our judge Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas. Well, as we get out here in selection of your uh, third division of uh, prospect steers out here at the National Western, uh, definitely with every class and every division, uh, they just get better and better. And uh, the classes and divisions before these have been just uh, phenomenal, and I wouldn't expect anything less. And I think these are a great set of cattle. You know, when you're, as a show judge, when you're sorting through the classes, uh, you're just trying to break it down where it makes sense to you logically and, and then where you can uh, defend what you just play, how you just placed them. And, and always try to keep cattle in mind that are sound, they're functional, they've got some rib shape to them, but to me this is a show, so they've got to have some look about them and some presence about them. And I think once we get out here in this lineup, I think all the first and seconds uh, represent that. There's some that got a little more rib and power than others. There's some that are just a little better on their feet and legs than others. But uh, out here in this particular division, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select four in this particular division again to come back. I'm going to go select your champion and reserve, and then we'll go third and fourth in this particular division. I think there's a pair of calves out here in your division, your championship. Uh, it's the one in particular that I think has that extra added substance and rib shape about him. I think he's got that extra internal look and dimension when you get off the side of him. And when you get up behind him, I think he's a powerful, constructed individual that still puts it together in a real complete package. If you would, put your hands together. I'll go pick you some champions. As we bring the second in that class, I thought that was an ultra good, ultra good calf in his own right. But there's one out here that really suits me really well, and it's hard to punch a hole in this one. This is young lady's gold one. He's going to be a reserve. Congratulations to her. In such a stout, powerful class, I don't think we can leave this one out of the lineup. This young lady out of class three that was second in that class, she'll be reserved. Congratulations. With that said, the fourth place calf out of this division is going to be this young lady with this black and white steer. I think really an outstanding steer to be fourth in this division. Congratulations. Get to your Division Three Championship for Prospect Steers. Your champion 
is out of class 14. That is 12-3-10 Riley Rogers. The weight 804 Searsboro, Iowa. The reserve comes out of class 13, 12 4 13, Sadie Wynn, Newcastle, Oklahoma. The third overall in that division was the right in in class 14. That was second. That was 12 0 1 1 6, Lauren Ost, Lacine, Kansas. And the fourth overall was out of class 15. That's 12 3 30, Luke Seawald, Brush, Colorado. Up next, we move to class 14 in the prospects tiers. It'll be class, or excuse me, 833 to 841, the weight range. 833 to 841, class 18 coming in next with our judge, Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas. Over on the other side, our judge is Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri. This is class number one, Market Heifers. The weight range 571 to 613. Our first class of six within the Market Heifer division. Well, good afternoon. Uh, sure an honor and a privilege to be here with you today, uh, this afternoon, and work through your livestock and give you my opinion of them, work with your young people. Uh, once again, uh, truly an honor to be with you, and uh, it's going to be a fun, positive afternoon and a really good way to start right here. Uh, really good pair as we get into this first class of market efforts, and I think uh, lots of quality amongst both of them. Young man's black heifer, I think when we get into her, she's the most comfortable in terms of her feet and legs and how she sets them down and goes. She sets her rear foot down, goes just a nickel easier than the one right behind her. She's still square built. She's got some width coming out of the backside of her shoulder all the way to her pin set. She's still attractive enough. She balances extremely good in her underline. One that gets out and goes good enough. I think what separates this pair, when that one comes right at you, just a nickel wider in terms of her underpinning, just a little more true width and genuine uh, underpinning in that one than the painted up one here that goes second. The one in second is extra good looking. You talk about one that's got a high neck set extremely good looking beautiful through her throat and right in through her face uh, still gives you a nice look she's stouter bone she's bigger back than the one that beats her I think we need to set this one down on her back foot we need to square her up in her hock when that one drives right away from you I think too for one that's that stout up high we need to make that one a nickel wider belt coming right at you and in her chest put just a nickel more true width and ump in that one good pair congratulations to both of you the painted ever that comes next, a longer bodied one, one that's still square built and has some width and has some shape to her, really attractive. Just need to soften this one in her body and back into her flank. Need to redesign her in terms of how she gets out and uses her rear leg. But a good one there, young man, you've done a good job with. Stout one comes here next, uh, the roan one. Extra big backed and extra big hip. She is the widest pinned one in this class. She is the stoutest coming out of the backside of her shoulder. We just simply need to change that one in her rear leg and how she gets out and goes. She gets a nickel tangled up for me uh, on both ends. We just need to redesign her, make that one square and more flexible as she gets out and goes. Little softer made one comes here in old yeller. Uh, next, uh, lots of body and still good in her hip. Doesn't balance as good, not quite as much true shape. Good class of cattle, better set of young people. Congratulations to all of you. Once again, those comments from our judge on the prospect heifers, Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri. Up next will be class number two, prospect market heifers, the weight 629 to 681. 629 to 681. Here's results on class number one. First place, 12489, Carter Schimmick from Gary, Nebraska. Second, 12486, Cage Schweitzer, Wellington, Colorado. 
In third, 12-491, Lane Sinclair, Fort Collins, Colorado. In fourth, 12-447, Alex Graves, Pine Bluffs, Wyoming. Fifth, 12-487, Matthew Seeker, Trenton, Nebraska. The scratch was 12-582. Program placing for class one, prospect market heifers, two, five, four, scratch, three, one. Once again, two, five, four, scratch, three, one. In the ring, class two, prospect market heifers, 629 and 681 are Judge Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri.
Another really good class of market efforts. We get into the second one here, and, and with that, not only the quality of the livestock down through here, but the quality of kids, exceptional, and congratulations to all of you. So we bring that top pair on around here. I think uh, really close in terms of uh, both a pair of cattle that have extra good muscle. They're square built. They're big coming out of the backside of their shoulder. They're big hipped. Uh, they're still wide pinned. They still balance as good as any in this class. Uh, a nickel stouter featured than the rest of them. I think what separates them is the white-legged one is way better looking. Her neck sets higher in the top side of her shoulder. She gives you a lot more attractive look. This thing is dead set good from her in her underlying quality. From her chest back into her flank, I think that one is so good there. She still has extra width. She's the most comfortable coming and going. She's the squarest in terms of her knee and her foot and her rear hock and, and, and her and her rear foot as she goes away combined with that extra balance and look. We question how big that one ever gets. She's a nickel quicker in terms of her overall makeup, but you talk about quality nose to tail. That's the best one in this class in my mind. Congratulations, young man. Little stouter one comes here in second. This one's longer bodied. She's longer hip. She's way bigger backed when you get right up in the top side of her. This thing's got incredible big legs. Her feature and stoutness of feature is good. We need to raise that one's neck set. Her neck's Hung a little too low in the top side of her shoulder. One that wants to get opened up just a nickel in terms of from the point of her shoulder to the ground. When that thing's on the stand or comes right at you, we need to redesign her there. But you talk about one that's long bodied and big backed, extra good in terms of her width. Very well presented. Congratulations, young lady. The gray one comes next. Really, really good in terms of just basic fundamentals are good. She balances good. She has some extra muscle. She still gives you a nice enough look. Feet and legs are good. Probably better than the one right in front of her. We need to change that one in her hip. She wants to get a nickel lower in her pin. So maybe that one doesn't proportion quite as good and balance as good as those two cattle right in front of her. But that's an awfully high quality one you've done a good job with. Pair, next pair here. Uh, both cattle that are uh, have some length and some balance and some muscle. The black heifer here is just better in terms of feet and legs. A nickel more extended in terms of where her neck set is and the way she's built up front. Just more comfortable when we get her out into the move. Just need to balance her compared to those other ones right up in front of her. A little better balanced one comes next here in the painted one. This one's a little shorter back so the center of her body balances a nickel better than the one right in front of her. One is still attractive. She's better in terms of her bone and her feature and the one right in front of her. This one just wants to run downhill and get a little too open on the top side of her shoulder and coming right at you. Maybe not quite as coordinated in terms of how she uses her rear hip and her leg as well. Long bodied one that's good looking comes next. One that's got muscle. This one just needs to be softened up in terms of the middle of her body. Need to redesign that one in terms of her rear hock all the way to the ground. Good pair here. These young men done a nice job with. I told them these are quality livestock right here. Maybe a little more maternal uh, than this particular setting, but the baldies, long body, good looking. Need to give that one way more stoutness in this particular division, but lots of quality in her. Young man's done a nice job, comes next with one that's got a nice maternal look. Once again, maybe in a different division, that one gets along a little better. Congratulations to all of you. Over here on your prospect steer side, uh, just waiting on the mic here, and three outstanding individuals to win uh, the start this particular class, and uh, you can go four, five, six deep in this particular class, and I, and I think two cattle up here, you can bring that uh, gray and white one around, I think two cattle that are phenomenal in their own right, and I'll tell you the differences I see in them, because I don't think either one of them is just perfect uh, in, in certain situations. Uh, there's times I wish this uh, class winner would handle his hind legs a nickel better. There's times I wish that one in second would handle his center part of his top and his hip shape just a little bit better when we put them in motion. But I'm going to tell you what I see in the two cattle and what separates them to me. There's so much boldness. There's so much rib shape. There's so much power. There's so much inner dimension of the young lady's calf that wins the class. I think it's really hard to, to not you go with this calf in this particular setting. He's still with that much power, and when you get behind him, he's got so much shape and turn and, and power down to his lower quarter, and he's so massive in terms of his bone, and I like the way he handles his top line. I like him probably a little better out of his tail head than the calf that comes in second, and I think he's really neat and good and chiseled up through his front one-third. I think that's an awesome calf to win 
this particular class. The calf in second, I like this one a lot. He is maybe doesn't have that center dimension in terms of that rib shape of the calf that wins the class. And when he goes around the ring at times and he gets a little antsy, he wants to just get up every so slightly in the middle part of his spine and how he handles his tail head and his pin set and maybe not always on point as attractive as the calf that wins the class. But a soft-booted steer that's really sound on his feet and legs, maybe that's not that overall punch and, and rib shape of our class winner, but two outstanding cattle. I don't care where you come from or how you, how you look at cattle, this calf that comes in third is good cattle. And I'd take a hundred of them just like him day in and day out. You want to talk about one that's built right on the ground, from the ground up. He's as neat up through his front one third. He handles his top line. He does not overwhelm you with the mass and the hair that the cattle that come in first and second in this particular class. But that is a phenomenal good animal in his own right. He's solid. He's big hip, big ended. He may be not as wide backed as the cattle in front of him, but that is a good built calf that is, gives you a good luck. Young lady does an outstanding job of presenting that one. I like the red baldy steer. I like his rib shape. I like his muscle shape down his top. I like how soft he is in his top line and how much muscle he shows. He wants to get a little straighter and wider up on that front one third for me to get him up any higher. Good calf. I like the bone work, the soundness, the look and the dimension and rib shape of this calf. I need to get him wider in terms of behind his blades and we get behind him in the center part of this calf to get him up any higher. Real complete uh, middle of the road calf here. Nothing wrong with him. Uh, maybe not as uh, give you the muscle muscle shape or the look of the cattle in front of him, but I think he's a sound, functional, practical calf to come in next. Pair of steers that come in next, I think the young man's got a sounder individual in terms of this calf. He maybe doesn't have the the look and extension and balance up is some of the cattle in front of him. I'd like to tone him down in his tail head and make him just a little base wider. I do like the width and base of the one that comes in next. I'd like to neaten him up through his front one third and give him a little more length in terms of his front one third. Compact steer here in terms of his body type, rib shape and muscle. Neaten him up and balance him up from the side and make him a little more attractive. Outstanding set of uh, prospect steers in that particular class. Uh, congratulations all exhibitors. Put your hands together for an outstanding class. Flip over to the prospect market heifers class two. Here's results. First place 12-477, TJ Rice, Fort Collins, Colorado. Second, 12-483, Tanner Rupel from Wiggins, Colorado. Third, 12-439, Nick Eichenberg from Greeley, Colorado. And fourth, 12-451, Aiden Harkin from Carr, Colorado. Fifth, 12-499, Joel Wagner, Flagler, Colorado. Fourth, 12-451, Aiden Harkin from Carr, Colorado. 5th, 12-499, Joel Wagner, Flagler, Colorado. 6th, 12-503, Dara Wireman from Idalia, Colorado. 7th, 12-430, Carol Brinicky from Cheyenne, Wyoming. 8th, 12-432, Jordan Christensen from Rifle, Colorado. Program placings for Class 2 Prospect Market Heifers. 7, 3, 5, 8, 1, 4, 6, 2. Once again, 7, 3, 5, 8, 1, 4, 6, 2. In the ring next with our Judge Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri. This is class number three, prospect market heifers. The weight 697 to 715. Back over on the prospect steers coming in the ring at this time is class number 19. Prospect steers weighing 843 to 849. Our judge Shane Meyer, Stonewall, Texas. Here's the results on that last class number 18. First place 12035, Cassidy Brimmer, Redfield, Iowa. In second, 12282, Cash Pratt, Pueblo, Colorado. Third, 12098, Sydney Furrow, Clovis, New Mexico. In fourth, 12106, Hayden Glass, Tatum, New Mexico. Fifth, 12181, Jocelyn King, Cope, Colorado. Sixth, 12157, Trace Johnson, Monta Vista, Colorado. Seventh, 12250, James Mullins, Elbert, Colorado. In eighth, 12080, Hayden Ewing, Genoa, Colorado. Ninth place, 12373, Cade Temple, Monta Vista, Colorado. Program placings for class 18 are as follows. One, nine, four, scratch, two, eight, six, five, three, seven. Once again, one, nine, four, scratch, two, eight, six, five, three, seven. In the ring, once again, class number 19, prospects tiers, 843 to 849. Take just a moment here and thank another state arena sponsor once again. New this year, the Cobb Little Farm Show is proud to support the National Western. They invite you to attend the 56th Cobb Little Farm Show coming up next week, January 28th, 29th, and 30th at Island Grove Regional Park in Greeley. If you eat it, drink it, or wear it, agriculture produced it. Over 300 vendors and tons of educational breakout sessions each and every day. In fact, Beef Day is January 28th. You can check out an online brochure and see the complete schedule at CobbLittleFarmShow.com.
Another really nice class as we get into this third class of market efforts, and I think with that, once again, it's competitive all the way through and a good set of exhibitors as well. And I think with that, very logical, straightforward place to start. Young man's got a good one here in terms of one that combines a good look and balance and, and one that is the most correct in terms of the way she's built from nose to tail. She's the most comfortable as she goes. With that, she's still the stoutest in terms of up high, coming out of the backside of her shoulder all the way through her to her pin set really really good there she's one we can raise her up the top side of her neck and we could smooth her up right over the top of her blade as that one gets out and motors but uh really really good one very well presented congratulations young man nice job a little more extended one comes here in second in terms of just overall sheer length of body and, and length of neck and one that is hooked a little higher in the top side of her neck and in terms of where it attaches, one that still balances okay, just not near that, uh, that, that extra in terms of balance and softness and look, one that's maybe just a nickel more rigid in terms of how she utilizes her rear leg, but lots of quality in that one in terms of extension, still having a great look and still have an extra muscle, very well presented presented as well. Congratulations. Third and fourth get to be uh, a little closer in my mind, and I think once you get past this gray one's head and her face, I think from her ear back, she's the higher quality one. She's square out of her back. She's square coming out of the back side of her shoulder. She has more true width when you get right up in the top side of her skeleton. She's still wide pinned. She still balances good of this pair she's the most correct in terms of feet and legs she's square coming and going reaches and goes i'd love to change that one in terms of her face and her look there up front i think uh, that heifer could get a little uh, a little better if we change that but uh, lots of quality there uh one here in fourth one that is uh uh, a little more attractive. She's a little better headed. She's a little more attractive in terms of her neck set. Uh, one that has uh, extra good muscle. One that's good in terms of her balance. Not as coordinated in terms of her feet and legs. Wants to get spun out up front. We need to square that one up in her rear hock as she goes right away. But really good. Uh, young man, you've hung in there with one that didn't want to be a show heifer today. Keep it up. Uh, good days ahead of you. Uh, long bodied one comes here next in the black one. One that's still attractive and has some muscle just need to soften this one in terms of the center of her body redesign that one in terms of her tail head all the way down to her rear hock and her foot just make that one more comfortable uh, a little better design there as we get her out here in this class the white one comes next here's one that's got some uh, uh, true quality in her a big centered one and I'm going to say she's probably to me a little more maternal in her look right in the center of her body than a market ever uh, maybe ought to be uh, you love that center part of her body your underlying balance is good Good. One that uh, we need to square this one up in terms of her hip and her rear leg. She wants to get a nickel shorter in terms of her rump, a nickel planer in terms of right up through the top side of her neck and right in through the point of her shoulder, but one that still has lots of quality. Just need to redesign her. Heavy muscled one comes next here in the in the spotted one, uh, the roan one, but uh, we just need to level her up in terms of down her top line, change her hip and her rear leg. But she has extra good uh, muscle and still balances okay. Another good class. Congratulations. There's results on class number three, prospect market heifers. First place, 12-470, Lucas Mullins, Sterling, Colorado. Second, 12-425, Kurt Bernhardt, champion, Nebraska. Third, 12-485, Emma Schindling from Pierce, Colorado. Fourth is 12-500, Jackson Walker, Greeley, Colorado. Fifth, 12-490, Kaylee Simpson, Paonia, Colorado. Sixth, 12-518, Trinity Bolger from Craig, Colorado. 7th, 12-475, Laramie County Community College, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Program placings for Class 3 market heifers. 6, 5, 1, 2, 3, 7, scratch 4. 6, 5, 1, 2, 3, 7, scratch 4. In the ring, Class 4 prospect market heifers. The weight 722 to 749 with our Judge Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri. Your attention, please. We have a black XTS Cadillac. It is in Space 38, the State of Marina, Colorado Plate CLK269. You got about 10 minutes to get out there and move that vehicle. 
The tow truck has already been called and it will be towed by 2.30-2.15. Black XTS Cadillac, Colorado Plate CLK 269. Space 38 Stadium Arena, your vehicle will be towed at about 2.15. You better hurry. An outstanding way to lead off of uh, this particular class. We got a couple of Baldies up here in the trio of the, of the of the top end of the class, and Baldy Steer with the white legs. I think he just possesses the overall substance in terms of rib and muscle and mass and structural integrity to the highest degree. I think he handily wins the class. I think the one that's most like him in type and kind is a Red Baldy Steer. Gives you a good look from the side. He's sound on his feet and legs. He's a big bone, uh, stout rib steer. Maybe doesn't have the overall mass and width, the base in terms of his lower one-third of our class winner. I like the young man's black baldy steer that comes in here next. He's a good-looking, attractive steer, uh, just maybe not near as deep-bodied and, and deep in terms of his flank. And maybe a little gets a little restricted off his rear end. We put him in motion, but they're going to stand still. He needs to run third in this class. Uh, trio of steers here are similar in type and kind. Uh, two black and white uh, footed steers here, they're similar. I like the calf that comes in next. He's a little more extended up through his front one third. I like his rib shape. I like the way he handles his top line. I like this hip and mass about him. Uh, the calf that comes in next, same could be said about him. He maybe wants to break apart right behind his shoulders. He's maybe not as neat in terms of his tucked into his shoulders and his chest floor as the calf in front of him, but a big bodied steer. Uh, the red and white steer is similar to the cattle in front of him. He does doesn't have the overall substance, internal mass, and width and dimension of the cattle in front of him, but an attractive sound steer. Like the soundness and look of this steer that comes in next, for me, gets a little flat in terms of his lower quarter and flatten his rib, and a little framier in terms of his build. Young man's black steer that comes in next, a long-sided steer that maybe just gets a little up in his spine when we put him in motion and gets, needs more power. Young lady's baldy steer that comes in next, one that's a long-sided steer that's super sound on his feet and legs, just need to give him more power and dimension in terms of rib shape. I like to soften him up in terms of their center body. Outstanding set of steers in this particular class. If you would, give those kiddos a big round of applause. Congratulations to them. Catch up on results here. Go back over to Class 19 Prospect Steers. First place, 12-191, Kylie Kunzler from Park Valley, Utah. Second, 12-187, Ridge Notwell from Saratoga, Wyoming. Third, 12-268, Jet Peterson, Grant, Nebraska. Fourth, 12-236, Brock Miller, Kiowa, Colorado. And fifth, 12-237, Brock Miller, Kiowa, Colorado. Sixth, 12-136, Lexi Hill, Mack, Colorado. Seventh, 12-060, Brady Deal, Car, Colorado. In 8th, 12-321, Wyatt Sandell from Sedalia, Colorado. 9th, 12-210, Mackenzie Lopez, Julesburg, Colorado. Program placings for Class 19 Prospects tiers 2, 8, 7, 9, 3, 6, 1, 4, 5. Once again, 2, 8, 7, 9, 3, 6, 1, 4, 5. In the ring, Class 20. In the ring, Class 20, weight range 850 to 859. That'll be coming in next with our judge, Shane Meyer, from Stonewall, Texas. Back over on the other side of the ring, Class 4 prospect market heifers. The weight, 722 to 749.
want to go back here on the prospect steers. Correct myself. I was wrong on the fourth overall. It wasn't out of class 15. Fourth overall in that uh, last division was out of class 16. My apologies. That would be 12021 Echo Bartels, Loma, Colorado. My apologies. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it just kind of got to that spot, and we just got good, not to take anything away from where we've been to this point, but uh, I'll tell you what, lots and lots of quality here and lots of differences in terms of how they come to us. But before we get into the cattle, I'll tell you what, it's extremely competitive in terms of these young people, and I'll tell you there's nothing in my heart that's any better, any nearer, nearer to me than that. These young people out here giving it all they got with high-quality livestock, and I'll tell you what, my my hat's off to all of you. Congratulations. And the best of luck. Uh, lots of differences on the top end, and I'll be the first to tell you, uh, I'm going to use this black one because I think, one, she's the best built. I think she combines the best look, the best balance, the best running gear, and still is plenty stout in terms of down her top line, and her pin set is wide. Uh, I'd love to strengthen her up right in her top line when we get her on stand, but I think her extra extension, I think that's one that can go on and get a nickel more extended, a nickel bigger. When we get to the end, her her underlying balance is incredible. Her foot and her bone is good. Probably the best of these top four. I like that one. If she's not stout enough for you, uh, I guess she is me. I like that kind. Stouter one comes here in the next two pair uh, in these gray ones. And this gray one right here in second, you talk about one that's heavy duty in terms of muscle and shape and huge backed and, and one that has all the extras in terms of just sheer width. I think when we get down to it, that probably hinders her just a nickel. For me, one that looks a little more mature in her kind, gets just a little plainer in terms of her point of her shoulder and down through her chest. And we look at her in terms of her underlying balance. Uh, we need to change her there from her chest all the way back up into her flank. We need to balance that one a nickel better. She gets borderline of how far 
far forward she needs to go on her front knee. I think as we feed that one on down the road, to me, uh, she looks like one that uh, structure could maybe be a question, maybe just how big that one goes ahead and gets. If you like them extra heavy muscled, hey, grab a hold of that one and run with her. Good pair there on the top end. This one here in third, I'll tell you what, from her hip forward, she beats them all, and it's real simple. Uh, from her hip forward, that thing is deadly. You talk about a great underline and a high neck set and one that's beautiful in terms of her chest and, and, and the way her neck's hooked in the top side of her shoulder. She's good in her face for a feed and have her uh, one that has that look to her. We just simply need to redesign her hip. We need to raise her pin set up. We get at the wrong angle and look at her. Her pin set's too low. We just need to raise that pin set. We put her out into motion. She wants to deviate a nickel, tuck her legs, dump her pins. Not quite as attractive. I'll tell you what, from her hip forward, you don't make them much better in terms of a market animal. Nice job there. The yellow one comes next. Really, really square built. You talk about one coming out of the backside of her shoulder and all the way to her pin set that's extra, extra square built up high, extra wide, and one that still has true width and shape to her. One that still balances okay. A little more navel, not quite as good all the way back into her flank in terms of her underlying quality. I just like to stouten this one up in her foot and her ankle. I know she's not as hairy-legged, but I'd love to stouten that up and match all that power up high, make that one fit together. We can tidy that one up in terms of her foot placement. We get her on the stand up front as well. She wants to open up. Great job presenting a really a high-quality one. Heavy boned one comes next in terms of the silver one, uh, one that's uh, got extra good width and muscle and one that has lots of shape and still has a great look simply gets too flat from the point of her shoulder all the way back through the center of her body. We need to give that one more true shape right in the center of her. We need to make that one just a little more collected as she gets out and goes on her rear feet. Black Heifer comes next here, one that's attractive and balances good, one that all the basics are pretty good. We just run out of horsepower in that one, young man, in this class. We just need to give that one a shot more true shape. We need to set her back in her front knee and redesign her nickel in terms of how she goes to the ground. But a high-quality one you've done a good job with. It's got a good look. Stout one comes here next. Heavy-duty bone, big hip, big muscle, one that still balances good. We need to redesign her in terms of her feet and legs, change her there, set her tail head down down in her nickel, stouting that one up right up in the top side of her hip and in her pin set, but one that still has lots of quality in her. Good solid one comes next in the gray one. She's long bodied and square backed and has muscle. Just need to soften that one and stouten her up, but the basics are pretty good. Young lady, you've done a nice job. The baldy comes next, heavier bone than the one right in front of her, one that's wide pin. That one just runs out of true shape as we get into her from her shoulder all the way back through. Need to give that one just a nickel more shape. Young Young man's done a good job with a red one here. Long bodied, heavy bone. Her too, like the body. Just needs more true shape right through the center of her. Need to change that one in terms of her rear leg and how she gets out and goes. Congratulations to all you young exhibitors. Catch up on results here. Let's go on the prospect market heifers with our judge, Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri. First place, 12,450, Landry Griman, Eaton, Colorado. Second, 12446, Hayden Glass, Tatum, New Mexico. In third, right in your program, Lucas Mullins from Sterling, Colorado, 12469. Fourth, 12444, Julia Fry, Johnstown, Colorado. Fifth, 12494, Tyler Thomas, Sterling, Colorado. Sixth, 12472, Hayden Page, Akron, Colorado. Seventh, 12438, Delaney Dragert from Brush, Colorado. Eighth is a right in, 12459, Caden Kaysen, Wheatland, Wyoming. Ninth, 12, 426, Kaylin Block from Yuma, Colorado. Tenth, 498. Tenth is 12, 498, Nick Volmer, Marino, Colorado. Program placings are 10, 6, 7, 9, 5, 1, 4, 2. And the right ends, 3 is 12, 469. 8 is 12, 459. 10, 6, 7, 9, 5, 1, 4, 2, 3, 8. In the rig next for the prospect market heifers, class number 5. Weight range 766 to 809. 766 to 809.
another outstanding class, and I think these top four are really close in my mind, and I'll tell you the differences if you want to start pulling them across the side. I think the black steer that wins the class, he does so in my mind because he's the most complete calf in terms of his extension up through his front one-third, how his feet hit the ground every time, and how he handles his pastures when we put him in motion. I like his rib shape about him. I like how big and bold he is right behind his blades, and when you get behind him, I think he's got more than enough muscle, and he kind of just really square gives you that extra shape and that turn to that lower quarter and when you get off the side he's bold rib stout made good featured cap i think he's always just far to punch a hole in that one i think he wins this class young ladies yellow steer that comes in next body type i really like this calf in terms of his rib shape i like him i like him in his heart and his fore rib and his flank uh, he's a little finer in terms of his uh, bone work compared to the calf that wins the class Maybe not as extended up through his front one-third as the calf that wins the class. And maybe every now and again, I don't think it's an issue, but he will uh, just get up on his pastures every now and again and probably just more uh, nerves than anything. And maybe doesn't give you the overall look of the calf that wins the class, but I think a really good body type calf that comes in second. Three and four are close to me, and I like both these cattle, and, and part of me wants to get them up there in that top pair, but they both get just nickel uh, restricted in their stride. I read more true mass and muscle in this calf that comes in next. I think he gives you a good look from the side. I like the length and extension. He's a long hip steer with a lot of width and dimension. I think there's more true muscle down in his lower quarter than the calf that comes in next. I like this calf, and the young man does a great job getting this one presented and around the ring. Uh, just one that maybe wants to tuck up in his flank and gets a little high in his twist for me and wants to play out in his lower quarter. But he's a good-looking steer, and he's done a great job. Congratulations to him. Young lady steer that comes in next. I like this steer from a, point, a standstill point. Uh, he's just a little too restricted in his stride. He's a little straighter, too straight in his knee and his, and his hock for me today. But, boy, standing still, he gives you a good look. If we can change his structure and running gear up there, we can definitely get that one up there on the top end. I like the gray calf, and if you just study him for what he is, that thing's got a good body and a good back and a good hip in him. He's ultrasound on his feet and legs. He maybe is not a deep body to some of the cattle in front of you. A deep-bodied calf comes next, and the red steer, he's just a little plainer up through his front one-third. Maybe not as uh, attractive off the side, but a good doing steer. Attractive steer that comes next is the red and white steer. Uh, just maybe needs to tone him down in terms of framework and body type. Uh, gives you a good look from the side. He's got some muscle and some hip about him. Just like to give him a little more dimension to get him up any higher. Like the baldy steer, attractive steer. Like to give him more width and de depth in terms of body and give him more uh, substance in terms of rib shape. Young ladies, black steer that comes in next. Uh, a bold sprung steer, easy dude and easy feeding steer. They like to relax him a little bit on his pastures and give him a little neaten him up through his front one third yellow steer that comes in next um outstanding steer here that's really thick in terms of his top line he wants to roll a little bit in his pins and maybe just a little unorthodox on his back legs but a good steer outstanding set of steers outstanding set of exhibitors in that particular class if you would give him a round of applause there's results on class 20 prospect steers first place 12079 bailey erickson gilton colorado in second, 12-0-0-2, Sierra Collins, Chattanooga, Oklahoma. In third, 12-3-22, Maya Sandley from Osceola, Nebraska. Fourth, 12-1-15, Landry Griman, Eaton, Colorado. Fifth, 12-0-27, Ryland Bernhardt, Greeley, Colorado. In sixth place, 12-1-64, Leah Jones, La Plata, New Mexico. Seventh, 12-3-69, Mackenzie Swanamir from Ignacio, Colorado. Eighth, 12-0-59, Brady Deal, Connor, Colorado. Ninth was a write in, 12 0 54, Bristol Wireman. Tenth, 12 1 34, Nicholas Hermes, Woodrow, Colorado. Eleventh, 12 0 51, Clayton Cox, Pine Bluffs, Wyoming. The program placings for class 20 are 2, 11, 5, 3, 4, 7, 1, 8, 10, 6, 9 is a write in, 12 0 54. Once again, 2, 11, 5, 3, 4, 7, 1, 8, 10, 6, 9. In the ring, class 21, prospect steers, the weight range 860 to 870. Judge, once again, Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas. Another really good class here. Maybe one that's a little more challenging to line up. I think it's very competitive. I think there's lots of quality in it. And I think with that, pretty well a straightforward place for me to start. In my mind's the red one. She's the one that, she's not the heaviest muscle, not the heaviest bone, uh, not the most attractive, but I think she's the one that has the most positive. She's still square built. She's still square pinned. She still has width to her. Her underlying balance is incredible. Running gear's good. Her feet and legs are good. You question maybe where this 
this one ends long term and it go quicker in terms of her muscle pattern. But I think just all the positives, young man's done an excellent job with a good one there to start. The next two or three or four get uh, a little challenging here. And I'm going to tell you, the yellow one here, uh, I think in this particular setting, in feeder heifers and market animals, she's the one I'm the most comfortable with next. She's the squarest built one. She's the one that's bigger in terms of her back and her pin set. She still balances good. She's still attractive enough when we put her out into motion and goes good. We need to redesign her in terms of her chest and up to her front end. We can square that one up in her pin set, but I think in an actual market heifer setting, she has enough extra muscle and enough extra balance and just stoutness and looks like a, a market animal. She goes ahead and, and gets to second. No doubt this painted up one here in third. She's higher quality than the one right in front of her, and I'm not going to tell anybody she's not. This is a little more maternal kind for me, a little more of a breeding heifer. She's good looking. She's big centered. She gets out and goes good. In this setting, we just got to give that one more true shape. That one's got to have more true shape and width and stoutness of feature and when we get into that top uh, set of them. But a high quality one, young lady's done a good job with. A little quicker built one here in terms of maturity pattern, but awfully, awfully big in terms of muscle and shape up high and big backed and wide built. That one wants to get a little uh, uncoordinated when we get her out into go and maybe one that gets a little shorter in terms of her neck, a little plainer in her face. Good solid livestock comes here in the gray one. Long bodied, extra wide built still has muscle feet and legs are good we get this one on the stand and she kind of wants to come apart a little bit we don't maintain that still that good look and that balance we get her out into motion that one gets a little better i just wish she'd stop and collect herself long bodied big bone wide built one comes next you simply need to soften that one beautifully presented uh nice hair coat young lady you've done an excellent job just need to give that one more body Big centered one that's got extra muscle comes here next. One that gets just a little quicker, a little rounder in terms of her muscle pattern. One that still gives you a nice look. Feet and legs are good. Need to just extend that one out through her hip, square her up. Long bodied one comes next here that still has some muscle and some width. Just need to balance that one in terms of her underline from her chest back into her flank. Need to give that one more true body shape. The body that comes next, this one has more shape right in the center of her body. One that still has muscle and width. Just need to stout that one up in terms of just sheer muscle and shape. But a good class. Congratulations to all of you. Here's a result on class number five, Prospect Market Heifers. First place, 12-4-22, Jackson Allen Mitchell, Nebraska. In second, 12-4-31, Courtney Carr, Pierce, Colorado. In third, 12-2-0-5, Bristol Lesky from Durango, Colorado. In fourth, 12-4-93, Trotter Thomas, Sterling, Colorado. Fifth, 12-4-34, Eleni Diaz Galindo, Greeley, Colorado. Sixth, 12-4-63, Madison McIntosh, Wheeland, Wyoming. In seventh, 12-4-71, Ned Nelson, Hartville, Wyoming. Eighth, 12-4-66, Cabri Mullins, Hesperus, Colorado. Ninth, 12-4-57, Riley Joseph from Berthoud, Colorado. Program placings for Class 5, Prospect Market Heifers. Four, eight, scratch. Three, seven, nine, two, six, one, five. Once again, four, eight, scratch. Three, seven, nine, two, six, one, five. In the ring with our judge, Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri. This is class number six, Prospect Market Heifers. The weight range, 816 to 932. After this class, we'll have our grand champion, and the top five selection for the prospect market heifers.
Well, an outstanding set of uh, prospect steers in this class, and I think a stout end to start off your class with. And I think two cattle that are very similar in type and kind. I like the boldness and the stoutness of the calf that they're going to win the class with, and I like the way that he handles himself when we put him in motion in terms of his extra rib, his uh, softness in terms of his top line, and he's a wide pin, thick-ended steer that I think just is really attractive and massive in his bone work and his rib and his muscle shape, and I think he's an outstanding steer. He's laid in neat in his shoulder. He's smooth made, but he's also packed full of red meat and muscle and good rib shape in him. I like the attractiveness of the calf that comes in next uh, I really like this deer that and, and probably the reason that he does not win the class and the young man does an outstanding job he's a little straighter and harder when he puts his hock in the ground in terms of how he drives that hind leg in the ground for me I like that extension that he has up through his front one third and that's getting awful picky on a really really good one but if we could change that limber him up just a little bit in terms of the long haul uh, I think that's an outstanding calf I like this calf the young man brings you next in terms, I thought these two cattle were close in type and kind. On the standstill, I like this one's look better. I like his rib shape. I like his muscle shape. I like the, just a lot of things about this calf. The only problem I have with this calf at this particular stage in the game, he wants to just get a little restricted and shorten his stride every now and again. If he doesn't get any worse than that, he's got the body and build of a really good one. Congratulations, young man's brought us a lot of really good ones today. Young lady brings you a really good soft structured steer in terms of his soundness. He doesn't have the width or the mass in terms of the center body and a, a center dimension of the calf that's in front of him. I do like him better on his feet and legs, but I need to pull him apart in terms of his center rib to get him up any higher in this class. She does an outstanding job. Told this young lady it's a really good calf. He's running to some really tough competition, but I like the bone work and the soundness of this calf. He's got some good extension. He maybe doesn't have the unique look up through his front one-third of the cattle in front of him. He maybe doesn't have the muscle shape and dimension when you get right on behind his blades and out through his hip and his quarter, but I think he's an outstanding calf. Young lady's calf that comes in next, he's an awful attractive steer that's sound on his feet and legs. He just needs more volume in terms of his rib shape and muscle shape to get him up any higher in the class. Black and white steer that comes in next, one that is a little plainer up through his front one third but from his shoulder back man he's solid and he's stout in terms of right behind his blade and how he's blended into his loin out through his pin set he's a sound functional steer he's just a little plainer and flatter in terms of his look and his dimension and his, his muscle shape when the lower quarter like the muscle shape of the young man's the half that comes in next I would just like to neaten him up and give him more extension up through his front one third he wants to get a little cresty neck and wants to get a little straight in his shoulder wants to duck his pins when you put him in motion things packed full of red meat and muscle Another calf that here has got a big old back in him and packed full of meat and muscle. Just like to balance him up from the side and give him a little more attractive look from the side. I do like the uh, attractiveness and the soundness of the gray steer that comes in next. He just needs to be pulled apart in terms of his center body. And we get behind him, we need to give him more width of base to get him up any higher. Outstanding set of prospect steers. If you're ringside, give those kiddos a big round of applause. They've been doing an outstanding job here at the National Western. Up next in the ring for the prospect steers will be class 22, weight range 872 to 878. Here's results on class 21. First place, 12042, Cassidy Curl, Santa Rosa, California. In second, 12272, Justin Fannebecker, LaSalle, Colorado. In third, 12358, Benjamin Stafford, Westcliff, Colorado. Fourth, 12192, Kylie Kunzler from Park Valley, Utah. In fifth, 12290, Jordan Rehnquist, Rolling Hills, Wyoming. Sixth, 12138, Lexi Hill, Mack, Colorado. Seventh, 12372, Burke Temple, Monta Vista, Colorado. Eighth, 12077, Blaine Inslee, Brush, Colorado. Ninth, 12043, J.D. Case, Hayden, Colorado. Tenth, 12188, Marshall Koenig, Briggsdale, Colorado. Placings in your programs for Class 21, 423. 861 9157. Once again, 423 861 9157. In the ring, class 22, prospect steers, weight range 872 to 878. Our judge, once again, Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas.
Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we just hit another gear pretty hard and, and uh, extreme in terms of quality. And, and, and you know, I, I never make this about me, but I, I'm going to tell you, I, I'm a simple Missourian and I can't change. I started the top and I just gathered cattle. I mean, uh, uh, I just needed to get that front end up there together and we didn't jumble them up or anything. But, but I, I just... Uh, I don't know. I guess I'm too uh, simple and set in my ways to ever start something uh, that, that I haven't done. So, uh, no, uh, uh, not to take anything away from you guys, when I pulled you out, you were just gathered from this end to that end, not in any order. Uh, but I'll tell you what, there's seven of them in this class that are smoking good. Uh, really are, and they're highly presented. And I'll tell you what, uh, that, that's why you want to come. That's why you want to uh, get fired up. That's why you like to do it. Uh, not only because the cattle are exceptional, but I'm going to tell you what, these top uh, four, five, six, seven competitors and exhibitors are, are flat out giving everything they got and leaving it right in here on this dirt floor. And I'll tell you what, we can forget about the cattle. And we can talk about that for a long time because I'm proud of you kids. You've done an excellent job. The best of luck uh, on down the road, not to take anything away from the other end. So as we get into these cattle, I think this top pair is extremely good. And I think what separates them is the one that wins is just bigger right in the center of her body. She has more true shape coming out of the backside of her shoulder all the way through the center part of her body. She's the wider built one right up high and tops of her skeleton. She still balances and gives you a good enough look. I'd love to make both these two wide going away from you to match what they have up high but when you put those two side by side there's just more true center shape right through the center of that one I think she's probably just a little stouter there long bodied one here in second that's so good coming out of the back side of her blade and, and and all the way down her top line she has a marking animal look she's got a good feeding look to her and one that looks like uh, she's going to get better as she goes her feet and legs are incredible in terms of being square they point the right way they go the same direction uh, as her nose does that's all good we talked about her i'd love to just give that one more true shape right through the center of her body from the point of her shoulder all the way back to her stifle i'd love to smooth that one up right over the top of her blade when we put her out into motion that one wants to open up up high maybe not quite be as good in terms of balance uh, in terms of right over the top side of her shoulder when we get her out and go right there did you talk about high quality ones there they are the one here in thirds extremely good good looking one that has extra muscle, one that still has body shape and good and bone. This one lands in third because I think she's genuinely stouter in her foot and her bone and her ankle, and it all blends and matches better. I'd love to balance this one a little better from her navel back into her flank, and we need to square her up from the point of her shoulder to the ground in terms of her front feet. But I think in terms of genuine good, this one's bone and foot matches that extra stoutness. She still balances good, still has body shape. A good one right there. Little longer gear one comes here and forth and one that's real good looking and when we get her stopped and we get her set up this young lady does an awesome job we get her out into motion she wants to get up in her spine and dump her pins a nickel she's extra hairy in terms of her leg hair but i wish her bone and her foot matched that stoutness she had up high i wish she was just a nickel more genuine as we went to the ground in terms of that extra stoutness good one comes here next one that's good balanced and has extra width that one needs to be redesigned in terms of her rear foot how she gets out and goes Big white one comes next here that's awfully good from her four rib back. Extra stout, one that's big centered and has extra width. One that we need to let that one's foot and bone match all that stoutness. Gets a nickel frailer down there. Gets just a nickel planer in terms of the way she's built in her chest. Young lady, you got a nice one. You've done a good job with her. This one here, uh, probably the most challenging in this set. Young lady, you've done an excellent job. We get this one stopped and she wants to be a show ever and gather her top line. Hey, I can get into this one quite a bit. She's good looking. She balances. She's big pin. All that's good. We get that one out on the side and she wants to kind of get lazy and come apart, get a little softer in her top line. Not quite that balanced. We couple that with that extra chest she has down low. Maybe not quite as attractive, but a really well presented good one there. A little quicker made one here comes next. One that has balance and one that has width. Need to extend this one in terms of her front end. We need to soften this one in the center of her body, but a good one there. Long bodied one that's real attractive comes next. Wide pinned and heavy bone. That one needs more true shape. Needs to get off both ends a nickel better. Big bodied one comes next. Young man, you've done a good job with her. That one just needs to be a little better looking when we bring her to town to show her, but lots and lots of positives in her. Congratulations. Awesome set of cattle. Better set of young people. We'll get to the results on Class 6 prospect market heifers in just a moment. 
In the ring will be our first and seconds from the six classes. This will be your grand champion selection for the prospect market heifer. We'll also be picking the top five. So grand reserve, third overall, fourth overall, fifth overall. So first and seconds coming back ring from classes one through six. And I'll get you those placings for six just as soon as we can. Here's the results on class six for prospect market heifers. Real quick, I'll try to get through them. First place, 12,480, Riley Rogers, Searsboro, Iowa. Second is 12,479, Peyton Rogers, Savannah, Missouri. Third, 12,501, Will Ward, Orlando, California. Fourth is 12,421, M. Lazy Hart, Ranch, Torrington, Wyoming. Fifth, 12,452, Lexi Hill, Mack, Colorado. Sixth, 12,440. 12440, Bailey Erickson, Gilton, Colorado. 7, 12484, Blair Sandley from Osceola, Nebraska. 8th is 12423, Sydney Amend from Casper, Wyoming. 9th, 12441, Brock Fassett, Durango, Colorado. 10th, 12492, Landon Spate, Delta, Colorado. Program placings are 9, 10, 5, 3, 2, 8, 4, 6, 1, 7. Once again, 9, 10, 5, 3, 2, 8, 4, 6, 1, 7.
Well, tell you what, as we get to the end of our market efforts here, uh, uh, let's uh, give all these exhibitors a big round of applause. This is truly a, a high-quality set of cattle, and and not only that, a tremendous. Uh, it's been a tremendous competitive, high-quality set of kids. So uh, once again, I don't wear one, uh, but if I had one, my hats off to you kids, and I truly wish you the absolute best on down the road and through the rest of this year. It's been a fun division, uh, lots and lots of quality. So you know. Uh, real quick, we won't talk a lot. Uh, we're not going to go back through these cattle. I've tried to describe them to you absolutely to the best of my ability uh, that uh, uh, that I can, whether I own them or you own them, and that's uh, that's the best I got. Uh, so, um, but uh, you know, in in my mind, I, I, I've always said this. I think there's truly only one reason in the world that we show livestock. Uh, I truly do, and I think there's uh, maybe some little branches that go off that, but I think at the end of the day. There's absolutely one reason and one reason only why we do show livestock, and that's simply to make the next generation better, and the livestock would be number two, and the young people will always be number one, okay? So as we keep that in our check as adults and we keep that level of integrity as high as we can in this, uh, uh, there's nothing uh, any greater that you can go do with your kids. Uh, go be competitive, especially maybe in a world where uh, maybe people that aren't in the agriculture world maybe tell us uh, competition isn't so good. It truly is. So uh, best of luck to you all. Give them all one more round of applause. I'll line them up and uh, the top five the way I like them. It's been an incredible show. It's truly been an honor to be a part of it. Congratulations. Well, a challenging class to sort through over here in your prospect uh, lineup, and there's a lot of give and take in this particular class, and I don't, I don't think that there's just one that just jumps out and says, hey, this is, he puts all the right things together. There's some trade-offs on these cattle as I sort through them and trying to put the best emphasis that I can on each and every one of them to sort the class. But in my mind, the most fault-free, the soundest, the best looking with the most amount of muscle that gives you the best look from the side is the young ladies that wins the class. I think he's the best on his feet and legs in terms of how he hits the ground when we put him in motion, how he handles his top line, his thickness out through his hip and the dimension in terms of his center rib. And then when you get behind him enough with the base, it's close for me between two and three and and standing still I probably like the red one a nickel better uh, but I like the the black one that comes in motion I like the way he handles his hind legs a little better when we put him in motion I think as a, a silhouette as, as a type and a kind he's more maybe like our class winner in terms of his center body his look from a, the side how he handles his top line I'd like it the way he handles his feet and legs I would like to give him just a little more center dimension to get him up any higher I like the red cap from a standstill if I could change him how he handles his hind legs out here I could dang sure run him second uh, pretty quickly I like the depth of body he has I like the mass that he has and I like his hip and dimension I would just like to limber him up on his feet and legs outstanding set of trio of, of steers that come in this class fourth place calf here no doubt the muscular steer of the group and and I like that about him I can't get him up any higher because of how he when we put him in motion uh, I'd like to see him take a little bigger reach I'd like to give him a little bigger foot size uh, standing still he's probably one of the better ones out here if I could give him a little more structural integrity I could run him up here up there in a one or two hole but I just need to limber him up on both ends no doubt the most muscular steer in this class now if I could put these two cattle together and give this one give the muscular one this one structure we definitely could have our class winner good looking sound big bodied one here I just need him wider right behind his blades I need him wider in terms of his center body and his lower one-third but he's awful sound and awful good looking off the side when we get off side steer that comes in next a big body steer that's got some muscle it gets a little plainer and not as attractive up through his front one-third as the calves that are in front of him uh, but he's a good steer that's got some muscle and some shape about him I like to square him up in his pin set and let, let him drive his hind leg with a little better authority when we put him in motion steer that comes in next the black steer here really a attractive steer like to soften him up in terms of his rib shape he wants to get it just a little uh, tighter in terms of his pasture and when we put him in motion he's a little harder in terms of his and higher in terms of his tail head set uh, he's got some muscle and boldness about him I just like to soften that one up to get him up any higher young man steer that comes in next big bone big footed steer 
maybe just like to balance him up from the side, give him a leg, make him a little more attractive up through his front. The young lady steer that comes in next, big bodied, easy doing steer. Maybe just doesn't have the width and base with the base in terms of her center body. Maybe not the substance of bone and attractiveness of the cattle that are in front of him. But outstanding set of uh, uh, prospect steers in that class. If you would put your hands together for me. It all starts with a dream, which turns into dedicating early mornings, late nights, long days in the show barn, and thousands of miles traveling down the road to the next one. The hours, sweat, and perseverance put into achieving these aspirations seem small in comparison to the bigger picture as it becomes a reality. And although you believed you were working toward the goal of banners and buckles, you later realize it was for something much more. Leaving your legacy isn't easy. It takes hard work, dedication, and a never give up attitude. But it's within these moments that champions are defined and dreams come true. Sullivan Supply, helping you build your legacy. Have our Division Four Prospect Steer Championship. Judge on that side, Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas.
Well, an outstanding set of steers and uh, just a lot of diff or not really a whole lot of differences, but they're just uh, differences in type and kind in this particular class. And I think they're all relatively really good cattle in my own mind uh, in, their, in, in their own right. I think the baldy steer that wins the class, he does so because he's the stoutest featured steer out here in this group that possesses the most structural integrity, the most rib shape, the most muscle, and the best look. And I think he just handles himself really well. I like the way he puts his feet and his legs and his pack and his hooves in the ground. I like the substance that he has. I like his rib shape. I think that's a bold, sprung, stout, made steer. Young lady does a good job with that one. Uh, the next best calf in my mind, if you did forget about the hair coat, forget about anything, and this one has a good hair coat, he's just not overly blessed with a lot of leg hair, is the red steer that's, that comes in next. In terms of, you talk about internal dimension and rib shape, this one's got it. He's so neat and chiseled up through his front one third. When you put your hands on him, he's so big right behind his blades. He handles his top line really well when we put him in motion. I like his shape in terms of his lower quarter. He's really laid in there good in his tail head. I think that's an outstanding high quality steer to come second. A good one that comes third in this class and it was close in these top trio of cattle. I just don't read him with as much width of base when you get right behind this one. Off to the side, big legged, good look. Gives you a soft look, gives you a good silhouette. But when you start uh, studying cattle for internal dimension and with the base, he wants to get a little base narrow for me compared to the cattle in front of him. Now, he's got probably plenty enough internal dimension if those two cattle aren't out here, and he's a good steer, and he's big bone, he's stout made. But I need to power him up and give him a little more internal dimension to get him up any higher. Outstanding steer to run third in this class. Like the Smokey that comes next, for me, he just gets a little flatter looking out here in terms of his rib and his look at times. Uh, he's a good calf in his own right. I like a lot of things about this one, but compared to those other ones, when you get off the side, he wants to just get a little flatter in terms of his rib and his muscle. Uh, he maybe handles his hind legs just a little unorthodox at times when we put him in motion, but I think he's a good quality calf. Close for me with the uh, yellow baldy steer and the black steer that come next, I read a little more substance and mass and muscle and internal dimension in terms of the yellow baldy steer that comes in next. I like him in terms of his softness over his back. We get behind him. I think he's a wider pin steer that's got more shape and dimension down to his lower quarter. I like the look and design of the black steer that comes in next. I don't think in terms of his lower one-third, he's as powerfully constructed from the ground up as the yellow baldy steer, but he gives you a good look and he's sound. Next steer that comes next, he, he's got plenty of muscle. He's really wide up high and wide in terms of his pin shape. He wants to get a little base narrow for me and maybe not as attractive as the cattle in front of him. Big rib steer, easy doing steer here. That's, uh, that's good made and sound in terms of his feet and legs. He just needs more look up through his front one third and I'd like to get him a little more substance in terms of his bone. I think the yellow steer that comes in next is similar like that calf. I don't think he's as sound and true on his feet and legs as the calf in front of him, but I do like the look that he gives you. Yeah, a black steer that comes in next, big bone, stout featured steer, like to balance him up and give him more attractiveness up through his front one third. Uh, outstanding set of exhibitors and, and cattle in that class. If you would, put your hands together one more time for us. Up next, the ring for the prospect steers will be the Division IV Championship. Classes 18 through 23, first and seconds in the ring. Speaking of Class 23, here's the results. First place, 12300, Emma Richardson, Yuma, Colorado. Second, 12-3-13, Chloe Rogers, Iowa City, Iowa. Third, 12-1-16, Wyatt Griffin, Pinedale, Wyoming. In fourth, 12-3-67, Taya Stromberger from Champion, Nebraska. Fifth, 12-1-47, Austin Hoopwa from Rogan, Colorado. Sixth, 12-1-10, Rafael Gonzalez, Wetmore, Colorado. Seventh, 12-1-78, Kesson Kessinger from Akron, Colorado. Eighth, 12-2-69, Storm Peterson, Grant, Nebraska. In ninth, 12284 Chancey Prigler from Harrisville, Utah. In 10th, 12363 Raina Steele from Craig, Colorado. Program placings for class 23. 6 5 4 7 2 3 8 10 1 9. Once again, 6 5 4 7 2 3 8 10 1 9. First and seconds back in the ring once again for classes 18 through 23. This year Division 4 Prospect Steer Championship. Our judge, once again, from, is Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas, a graduate of South Plains College. He grew up on a Hereford ranch in Texas where they had a cow-calf operation that produced 100 head of bulls to sell annually. They also had a show string of open breeding cattle as well as junior show steers. Currently, 
He's the owner of Meyer Show Cattle. They offer an extensive line of cattle-related services, including hoof trimming, clipping, halter breaking, preparing cattle for shows and sales. He sells about 50 show series per year and also owns and manages a prospect show series in the state of Texas known as the Battle of the Cattle. Our judge, once again, Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas. Once again, we'd like to say thank you to the Andes Clipper Company, family-owned operation out of Sturdivant, Wisconsin. They are offering our class winners, first, second, and thirds. First gets XL five-speed clippers. Second gets Andes Blue Ribbon Blades. And third gets Andes Cool Care Plus. The Andes Company is a proud sponsor of the National Western Stock Show's prospects here in Heifer Shows and very supportive 4-H and FFA youth programs across the nation. Representing Andes today is the National Training Advisor, Mr. Kirk Steerwalt. After today's shows, Andis will have donated $15,000 in awards and prizes to all of our first, second, and third prize win or class winners. Once again, thanks to Andis Clipper Company, the family-owned business from Sturdivant, Wisconsin. Once again, as soon as we get through pictures on the prospect heifer side of the show ring, our next class, or our first class, will open up the prospect breeding heifers. Class one will lead things off with our judge, Brent Murphy, from Houstonia, Missouri. That's after the picture break. Speaking of pictures, the National Western Stock Show's official livestock photographer is show champions. Check out the pictures taken in the arena and at the backdrop and purchase pictures online at showchampions.com. Well, as we get in the conclusion of the fourth division of your prospect steer show, you, as you sort through these cattle, I said before that uh, we'll definitely, uh, you're just trying to get pieces of the puzzle to fit together, and once we get them out here, I couldn't be more pleased that each and every division, once we get them out here, uh, there's, there's cattle that, that I, you know, get done with that class, and I scratch my head, and I'm like, wonder what that one's going to look like and with all the rest of the class winners, and I always say that the good ones look better next to the good ones and I don't know if that makes any sense to you but when you start stacking these cattle up and the quality gets better and the boats rises and the water gets deeper the good ones always rise to the top and I think that's could be said here we're gonna pick four deep again in this particular division I think there's a, several cattle in here that are really deserving and really good there's one out here to me that puts a lot of things together in terms of how he's built from the ground up how square and true he is on his feet and legs, how good he lives out through his front one-third, and when we put him in motion, uh, just how good he is and how he handles himself very well. If you would, put your hands together. I will get you your champion, your reserve, and your third and your fourth out of this division. As we get out here for your reserve, 
I think there's a calf out here that follows that one and will compliment him out there in the division. I think he's powerful in his rib and powerful in his dimension. I think he's a bold, sprung steer as the young lady's out of the first class. She'll be reserved. Congratulations. As we roll into the third in this particular division, I think the young man come out of the fourth division here, of fourth class of this particular division will be a reserve, stout made, sound steer here to come in fourth, third in this division. For me, there's a calf that hit me really hard in his class. He didn't get to win his class, but I thought it was ultra, ultra competitive in that class, and I think this is one that later on down the road could be a really good one, and I think every time the young man's brought him out here, he's handled the ring better and gotten better and better out of the first class of this particular division. Be your fourth overall in this division. Congratulations. Over on the Prospect Steers, Division Four champion is 12300. That comes out of Class 23, Emma Richardson, Yuma, Colorado. Reserve champion, Division, division Four, is out of Class 18, 12035, Cassidy Brimmer, Redfield, Iowa. Third overall in the division, out of Class 21, 12042, Cassidy Carroll, Santa Rosa, California. Fourth overall is that second in Class 18, 12-282, Cash Pratt, Pueblo, Colorado. Up next, we move to our final division. This will be our first class of that division, Class 24. Weight range 890 to 900. 890 to 900, Class 24 coming in the ring. Judge once again, Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas.
Good way to start our breeding heifer show as we get into them. Uh, lots of variation and lots of differences in terms of type and kind and, and maturity here. But I think uh, logically it fit together. In my mind, it just uh, uh, quality wins. Quality nose to tail, that's what I'm after. They don't have to be the biggest or the stoutest. Best looking, just simply the best quality from nose to tail. And that's why you win this class, young lady. I'd love to change her inner hip and change her in her rear leg. It's square that one up as she goes. But that's the one that's good looking and balances and has some body shape, looks maternal in her kind, still gets out and goes, nice place to start. The red heifer comes next, really good looking, really square built, stouter in her bone work, better in her hip, better in her rear leg than the one that wins, just need to soften that one up in the center of her body, need to give that one more true body shape as she goes, but good high quality one there to be second. The blue one comes next. The young lady does an excellent job, and you like her better on a stand. From her hip forward, that one's pretty good. She balances good. She's attractive. Her neck sets high. She's beautiful through her chest and back into her fore rib. We just simply need to stouten her up. Up high in her pin set, stouten her up and square her up in her rear hock as that one goes away, but a good female right there. The painted one comes next. A uh, uh, young lady's had to work hard to get this one showed and, and lots of good there. One that has more body shape and is stouter boned than the one right in front of her. The way she comes to us today, she's not quite as relaxed in her top line. We need to change her there. We need to let this one get out and go. But when she gets broke, a little more ready for this setting, uh, lots of quality in that one as well. Good heifer comes next here in terms of one that gives you a great look and extended, long bodied, has some true width and squareness up high. This one just simply needs more body right in the center of her. We need to give this one more shape. She needs to be softer. She needs to be uh, more shapely right in the center of her body. We need to relax her in her spine as that one goes, but a good one there as well. The little Herford looking one here uh, uh, that comes next, lots of good in this one. I love her body type and kind. She's moderate. She's one that balances good. Uh, she's one that's still attractive enough. She we simply need to square that one's rear leg up as she goes right away from you. She's in at her hock and out at her foot. We simply need to make that one truer going and coming. Good kind here comes next in the little baldy. A big centered one and one that looks really maternal in her kind. We just need to extend that one. That one gets a little jammed together all the way throughout from nose to tail. Not quite as attractive in terms of her hip and her rear leg when we put her out into motion. Lots of quality in that one. Stouter bone one comes next. This one's got big bone and big muscle. Still good looking, just need to change her running gear. Her feet and legs need to be better. We need to relax that one in her spine and let her go a little better as well. Good heifer, the young lady's done a nice job with. Long bodied, sound structure, just needs more body, more shape today. Good class of cattle, congratulations to all of you. Up next in the prospect breeding heifers will be class two, weight range 638 to 694. Here's the results on class one. First place 12, 584, Toby Dave Mitchell. Marlowe, Oklahoma. Second, 12-528, Alicia Dory from Brush, Colorado. Third, 12-586, 12-586, Cabri Mullins, Hesperus, Colorado. Fourth, 12-601, Kaylee Pieper from Fowler, Colorado. Fifth, 12-616, Kate Scott, Commerce City, Colorado. Sixth, 12-552, Landry Heidenreich, Dalhart, Texas. Seventh, 12 not 12-596, Clayton Ostermiller from Platteville, Colorado. 8th, 12-573, Ian Madden from Laramie, Wyoming. 9th, 12-574, Ian Madden from Laramie, Wyoming. Program placings for Class 1 in the Prospect Breeding Heifers. 9, 6, 4, 5, 3, 7, 1, 8, 2. Once again, 9, 6, 4, 5, 3, 7, 1, 8, 2. In the ring, once again, Class 2. On my left, Prospect Breeding Heifers. Weight range 638 to 694. Our judge Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri. A lot of variation in this class of prospect steers, to say the least, and a lot of give and take, and depends what you put your emphasis on and trying to get the best of all the worlds out here to try to get uh, the class winner and get up, get up the work up through these top end from end to end. No doubt in my mind, the heaviest constructed steer in terms of mass of rib shape and muscle and still puts it together in a sound package with some extra added mass and muscle about him and a good look. I think it's a young man's yellow baldy steer. He wins this class. I think he's the most practical steer in this particular class in terms of soundness, muscle, and look to the highest degree. I think the calf that's best, next best in this particular class in terms of how, he, how he's built from the side and how he, how he handles 
handles himself in terms of his top line and uh, just how he's built from the ground up and attractiveness from the side. A silhouette, and he balances up good. Young man, black steer comes in second. Outstanding steer here. Just not quite the horsepower to get around our yellow steer that wins this particular class. Young ladies, black steer here comes so in the third hole. Uh, he's uh, more practical in terms of his structure. I like the way he handles his feet and legs. There's no doubt I would like to soften him up in his fore rib and his rib all the way through. But I think of what we've got left in this class in terms of structural integrity and some look and some muscle. I think he needs to run third in this class. No doubt I'd like to give him more rib shape uh, for sure. Baldy Steer comes in next. He's got more rib shape, but I'd like to neaten him up and give him more presence and eye appeal to get him up any higher. Next Steer comes in next. Pair of steers are similar in type and kind. Chose to go with the young lady's black steer here that next. I think uh, in terms of his top line and underline, he's built a little better. I would like to give him more extension up through his front one-third. He's a big bodied steer. He's got a lot of volume about him. Maybe not as attractive. Steer that comes in next. Here's one. I just He's a little PC for me in terms of how he's built out his shoulder, his top line, out his hip, uh, but he's a big bone steer. He's sound on his feet and legs and got some rib shape. If I could balance him up a little bit better in terms of his top line and underline, I might could switch that pair. I like this calf from the standstill. Gives you a good look from the side. We put him in motion. He wants to get high in his top, a little low in his pin set, and a little more restricted in his stride. We get him on standstill, gives you a good look from the side. Outstanding long-sided steer here that comes in next. It's also sound in, his, uh, in terms of his feet and legs. I'd like to give him a neat, uh, more extension up through his front one-third. Maybe just give him a little more balance when we get off from the side. Big-bodied, easy-doing steer that comes in next. Thick-ended, just like to give him more attractiveness up through his front one-third. Give him more substance of bone in terms of his bone work to get him up any higher in the class. Outstanding set of uh, prospect steers again. If you would, give those kiddos a round of applause. In the ring on the prospect steers, this is class 25. The weight range 903 to 917 with our judge Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas. Here's results going back to class 24. Sorry, we had a flip around there on a scratch for that class. Class 24 results. First place, 12-160, Kaysen Johnson, Monta Vista, Colorado. Second, 12-103, Camden Smith, Estancia, New Mexico. In third, 12-117, Alania Halfen from La Plata, New Mexico. Fourth, 12-068, Darlia Dory from Brush, Colorado. Fifth, 12-069, Alicia Dory from Brush, Colorado. Sixth, 12-175, Kelly Kirchall, Calhan, Colorado. Seventh, 12-118, Christiana Halpin from La Plata, New Mexico. Eighth, 12-317, Tanner Rupel from Wiggins, Colorado. Ninth, 12-265, Darcy Parker, Delta, Colorado. Program placings for class 24, 7, 4, 1, 3, 8, 5, 2, 9, 6, scratch. Once again, 7, 4, 1, 3, 8, 5, 2, 9, 6, scratch. In the ring with our judge Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas, class 25, prospect steers, weight range 903 to 917.
Another really good class and lots of differences. And I think before we get into them, if we could put this yellow one and the black one together, I think we'd be pretty close to spot on. And I'll tell you what, uh, from, from this one's four rib back, I think she's uh, absolutely the best built one of the pair. She's not the most attractive. I'd love to change her through her head and her face for a breeding heifer. But with that, she's still unique enough. She's still good enough in her chest. She balances good in her underline. Her running gear is extremely square. This one stays true coming and going. She She's good in terms of just her body shape. I think where she wins this class, in my mind, she is the best coming out of the backside of her shoulder. She's better in her fore rib. She's better through her heart. She's just a nickel wider built when you get underneath of them. Young man, you've done a nice job. I'll tell you what, I love the look of this black one in terms of where her neck set is and her extension up front and the way she is down through her chest. She's good in her hip. She's still got some width. We just got to stouten that one up coming out of the back side of her shoulder. We got to open that one up in her fore rib for me to put her ahead of that one. Two really, really good ones. You like them how you like them. That's the way I saw them. Good solid one here in the spotted one. Uh, just the basic fundamentals are okay. She's got body. She's got width. One that's still flexible enough. She's not as attractive as those. She's not quite as coordinated in terms of her rear leg as she goes to those ones right above her. But that's good, solid livestock, young lady. You've done a nice job presenting a nice female. Good ever comes here next. Uh, really extended, really maternal in her kind. I like lots of things about this one. Her hip and her rear leg legs good she's still attractive enough this one just gets too far forward in her knee we need to set her back in her knee she wants to rock forward gets a little too straight right up there but good good kind right there the gray one comes next uh, underline up extremely high quality livestock good looking has width has squareness has body we need to change that one's running gear she gets a little straight on both ends and she needs to go better but i thought uh, she fit right there just due to her extra quality little bigger kind comes in her own one next really attractive really neat one that's long and level just need to open that one up that one gets too narrow coming right at you we need to soften that one but a good look and good extension pair of real stout ones come next a young lady's black one extra wide built and sure square maybe needed to be in that other division in my mind but one that just wants to run downhill a little bit too much we need to jack that one up at the top of her shoulder we got a great rear leg and extra width young man's uh, black and white one comes next a little more extended than the one right in front of her just doesn't balance as good as a black ever young lady's doing a nice job with one that's good looking long bodied just needs more shape in this class congratulations to all you exhibitors Over on the prospect breeding heifers in the ring next to be class three. Weight range 702 to 719. Here's results on class two. First place 12558. Weston Johnson, Digton, Kansas. Second, 12559. Cheyenne Johnson, Digton, Kansas. Third, 12620. Jackson Siebert, Strasburg, Colorado. In fourth, 12505. Brandy Fuller, Wright, Wyoming. Fifth, 12462. Marshall Koenig, Briggsdale, Colorado. In 6, 12, 5, 34, Marianne Fassett, Durango, Colorado. 7, 12, 4, 48, Alex Graves, Pine Bluffs, Wyoming. In 8, 12, 6, 38, Josh Waller from Trinidad, Colorado. 9, 12, 6, 35, Joel Wagner, Flagler, Colorado. Program placings for Class 2 are as follows. 2, 3, 7, 9, 5, 4, 1, 8, 6. Once again, 2, 3, 7, 9, 5, 4, 1, 8, 6. In the ring, class three, prospect breeding heifers, weight range 702 to 719. Our third class of 10 in the prospect breeding heifers. Judge once again, Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri. Wanted to once again thank our state arena sponsors for today's livestock shows and all our livestock shows here in the state arena. Saunders Construction. Locally founded in 1972, now one of the most largest and most stable construction companies in the state. Saunders offers well-paid positions with opportunities for career growth. Visit www.saundersinc.com for more information on career opportunities. Also want to thank John Deere, the official agriculture and turf equipment provider of the National Western. Visit your local John Deere dealer now for great deals. And remember, nothing runs like a deer.
Well, a challenging class here in this particular class to judge, but a enjoyable class to sort through because there's a lot of differences, and I don't know if there's two cattle out here that are similar in type and kind, and, uh, and to say that, to start off with our first and second, they're very different in terms of their, their muscle type and, and how they're built. But I think in my mind, in terms of rib shape, center body, muscle, look, attractiveness, soundness, and muscle to the highest degree. I think the young man's calf's got to win the class. He's the biggest and boldest out right behind his blades. He handles his top line really good. Uh, he's explosive when you get behind him. I think just a calf that's got that extra added rib shape, and I think he needs to win the class. I like the soundness and the, and the softness of the calf that comes in second. Uh, he's definitely sound in terms of how he puts his feet and legs in the ground. He's got that soft center body about him, and he's attractive enough up through his front one-third. He does not over overwhelming me with the amount of muscle in terms of right behind his blades and when you get behind him but he's a good complete practical calf to run top to in its second in this particular class great pair of steers Herbert steer gets here in third because he's the next most fault free steer of the lineup in terms of his structural integrity his rib shape his muscles his attractiveness I think he's at least have the least faults about him in terms of how he's built from the ground up and when you step off the side, his soundness and doability, I think he's a calf that needs to run third in this class. He doesn't overwhelm you with a lot of muscle about him, but I think he's a complete functional calf that needs to go third. Fourth and fifth are close here. I thought this calf in uh, fourth here is just a sounder made calf. He's a little quick and, and, and round in terms of his pin set and wants to get this a little peek at right behind his blades. He's big bone. He's stout made in terms of his rib and his forearm and his feet and legs. I would just like to give him more width up through the top side of his skeleton. The calf that comes in next, he does have the width and the base of the, of the top side of his skeleton. With that, he just sits a little straighter in his hock and his knee for me and in his pasture. He's a good calf. He wants to just get a little flat and tapered in terms of his lower quarter when compared to the cattle in, in front of him. Black Steer comes in next. I do appreciate this one in terms of attractiveness and a soundness. He just needs more width of base when you get behind him. And we can blow him apart And when we get behind him with that base and uh, with that soundness and that look that he has. We could definitely get a couple of notches out of him. Kafka comes in next here, one that I like in terms of his muscle shape, but he needs to be sounder on both ends for me to get him up any higher. From a standstill, he's got good meat and muscle about him. Young man's calf that comes in next, just one that wants to break apart when we put him in motion in terms of his top line. He's an attractive steer, like to tone him down in his tail head. I'd like to give him more muscle when I get behind him. Young lady steer that comes in next, alongside a deep made steer, maybe not as attractive up through his front one third, doesn't have the overall muscle that the cattle in front of him do. Long-sided, sound-made steer here, easy-doing steer. Maybe a little framier in terms of his bone work and, and his look from the side, but one that's ought to be easy-feeding, easy-doing calf that's ultra sound on his feet and legs. Ringside, if you've been as, uh, impressed with a set of cattle and kids that have come out here and exhibitors that have exhibited cattle out here, put your hands together and encourage them one more time. So we get into this particular class of breeding heifers. Uh, uh, you know, we've talked about it. Uh, I'm pretty simple, and there's no sense to overthink it. This class fits together pretty logical, and, and we'll take time when we need to and pump the brakes, and when we can go, we'll go. And, and very logical the way this one lines up. Uh, really, really good one to start. You talk about one that is good looking and has body and has a maternal shape to her, but still so attractive and so neat. One that's running gear second to none in this particular setup. I mean, her toes go the exact same direction as her nose does, just the way they're supposed to. She's square from the point of her shoulder to the ground up front. Her hock and rear foot is dead set going away from you. That thing's balance of her underline is genuine. It's incredible. We get after this one, one little spot, we could change her right through the shape of her face, right up through the shape of her nose. But that's an awfully, awfully good one. Very well presented. Congratulations, young man. Good way to start. Good heifer here in second in terms of the black heifer. Uh, one that's really extended and one that's still good in her body shape and still attractive enough. Need to stouten her up right behind her shoulder and down into her fore rib. We need to square that one up in her pin set. But that thing's balance is so good. Her feet and legs are good. She too square coming and going lots of quality very well presented congratulations young man's done a nice job with a really nice female here and third one that's really long bodied and one that's extended and good through her chest and good up in through her front end one that still has some body shape for the way she's built with her extra extension this one wants to run downhill just a nickel we need to raise her up there we need to gather that one up when we put her in in motion that one needs squared up as she goes right away from you but a really really nice one there young man's done a good job with the next red one here 
here. Just body type and kind gets her there. That's a moderate made one. It's got body shape, one that looks like she has some built-in doability to her. We need to change that one in terms of her look and her balance. We need to change that one in terms of her rear leg as well. But I think in the rest of this particular class, body type and kind is good enough to get her up in there to fourth. Good Heifer comes here next in terms of one that's extended and long-bodied, one that just simply needs more body shape. We need to just give that one more true shape all the way through her. We need to square that one up out through her hip and down into her rear leg. Young man, you've done a good job. Congratulations. We got a good red one comes next, and body type and kind suits me a nickel better than the one right in front of her. She's moderate. She's one that has body shape and maternal right in the center of her body. With that, she still has some width. This one just simply needs to set back on her foot when she goes. She wants to get too far up on her on her toes, not quite as coordinated as she gets out and goes. I love her body type and her kind, young man. Nice place there. Good one here in terms of extension and length in the roan heifer. This one just simply needs squared up in her hip and her rear leg. She needs balance better from her chest all the way back into her flank, but one that's extended, well presented. Best of luck to you, young lady. This young lady here smiled since she hit the gate, and I like that. It's, uh, that that'll get you a lot of places in this world, young lady. Promise me. Uh, I promise you that, but uh, uh, keep that up. Really a long-bodied one. It's attractive. This one just needs more shape. We need to set her back in her knee. Best of luck to you going forward. Congratulations to all of you. Let's stick with the prospect breeding heifers real quick. Class three, here's the results. First place, 12456, Jagger Horn, Anson, Texas. Second, 12560, Mackenzie Johnson, Digton, Kansas. Third, 12527, Cutter Dorsey, Shallow Water, Texas. In fourth, 12608, Laramie County Community College, Cheyenne, Wyoming. In fifth, 12640, Trevor Williams, Johnstown, Colorado. Sixth, 12591, Kim O'Neill, Silt, Colorado. Seventh, 12594, Kim O'Neill, Silt, Colorado. In eighth, 12570, Sean Larson, Littleton, Colorado. Program placings for class three, prospect breeding heifers, three, eight, four, six, five, seven, one, two. Once again, three, eight, four, six, five, seven, one, two. Coming to the ring at this time with our judge, Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri. This is class number four, prospect breeding heifers. The weight range 721 to 769. Once again, 721 to 769 for class four. Moving over to the prospect steers, and the ring is class 26. Weight range 918 to 933. Here's the results on class 25. First place, 12,006, Wes Brown, Kalispell, Montana. In second, 12201, Trista Lebsack, Bennett, Colorado. In third, 12243, Lola Mitchell, Hotchkiss, Colorado. In fourth, 12014, Tanner Tencio from Frederick, Colorado. In fifth, 12078, Blaine Inslee, Brush, Colorado. In sixth, 12224, Dominic Morrow, Pueblo, Colorado. In seventh, 12034, Trinity Bulger, Craig, Colorado. In eighth place, 12030, Kellen Block from Yuma, Colorado. Ninth place, 12009, Sydney Amend from Casper, Wyoming. In tenth, 12409, Melanie Wilcox, Conifer, Colorado. Program placings for class 25 prospect steers, 5, 4, 1, 9, 2, 8, 3, 7, 10, 6. Once again, 5, 4, 1, 9, 2, 8, 3, 7, 10, 6. In the ring with our judge, Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas. This is class 26, prospect steers. Weight range 918 to 933.
Well, outstanding pair of steers on the top end of this particular class. And I think when we put them in motion and just uh, chase them around the ring and then just you never can catch this black one at a, at a bad stand. And he just gives you an awful good look from the side. I like his extra extension up through his front one-third. I like his extra length and softness in terms of his spine. I like how he is on his feet and legs each and every time. I think both these cattle are really high quality. That's the difference as I see in him. He's a wide pin steer that's got a lot of shape and turn when you get to that lower quarter. I think he excels when we put him in motion, how he handles himself. Young lady smoky steer that comes second in this class. I do like this one in terms of how, mu how muscular and, and how much shape and, and turn he has to his top. He wants to just get up a nickel in his top when you put him in motion. He's maybe not as extended up through the front one third of that calf that wins the class, but that does not say he's short necked by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe doesn't give you quite as an attractive look off to the side, but that's a really, really good one to stand second. Congratulations to those exhibitors. Calf that comes in next is a, a real attractive steer that he's sound on his feet and legs. I think there's enough product there in this particular particular calf. He's built enough good, good enough from the side to get him in a third hole. He's square out through his pin set. I think he's a calf that's uh, attractive and sound enough to get in that third hole. Here's one that comes in next. I like his substance of bone about him. I like his length of side. I would like to give him more muscle when we get behind him. He gets a little base narrow for me to get him up any higher. Next calf that comes in uh, uh, place here is a big bodied steer. Maybe just a little plainer in terms of his front one third when we compare him to the cattle in front of him. He's a good bodied steer that's got some muscle about him. He's sound and relatively sound on his feet and legs. Like the red steer that comes in next, I think he's one that's neat up through his front one third. He gets a little tighter when we put him in motion. Uh, wants to get up just a little bit in terms of his back, but I think he's got a look about him and got some muscle. This pair of steer that's come in next, the gray, the smoky steer and the red steer, similar in type and kind. Both I could uh, make them just a little freer in terms of when we put them in motion. I think there's a little more attractiveness. I like the rib shape and softness of the center body and the muscle shape of the smoky calf compared to the red steer. I like the red steer. Big bone, a lot of timber underneath that one. Uh, good steer in his own right. He gets a little flatter in terms of his lower quarter, a little flatter in terms of his rib shape, and a little bolder in his, his shoulder is what bothers me about him. He's a little more restricted in his stride. Young man's black steer that comes in next. Big bodied steer. I like to neaten him up through his front one third. Young man's calf that comes in next. Good doing, easy feeding steer. Just like to balance him up and give him more attractiveness from the front, uh, from the side to get him up any higher. Outstanding set of uh, problems prospect steers if you would put your hands together again for us here's results on class 26 prospect steers first place 12 3 12 chloe rogers iowa city iowa in second 12 2 33 cheyenne Meyer, sylvan grove kansas second or excuse me third 12 197 guyana langton leroy kansas fourth 12 20 12 2 23 dominico Morrow from Pueblo, Colorado. Fifth, 12 3 53, Madison Stedden, Weldona, Colorado. In sixth place, 12 3 70, Lane Tillotson from Milton Freewater, Oregon. In seventh, 12 1 74, Kelly Kirchall, Calhoun, Colorado. Eighth, 12 2 47, Haley Mortis, Haley Boris, Myers, Colorado. In ninth, 12 2 19, Jace Baker, Sterling, Colorado. In tenth, 12 3 54, Latin Spate from Delta, Colorado. Program placings for class 26, 9, 2, 10, 6, 3, 8, 4, 7, 1, 5. Once again, 9, 2, 10, 6, 3, 8, 4, 7, 1, 5. And the rig next with our judge, Shane Myers from Stonewall, Texas. This will be class 27 prospect steers, weight 983, 938 to 975, 938 to 975, class 27. Another good class here in our breeding heifers, and with that, excellent set of young people and exhibitors down through here. Uh, congratulations to all of you. A little challenging in spots to get lined up, but uh, straightforward, play, a straightforward place to start is the young man's heifer. She's the highest quality one from nose to tail, and one that's pretty unique in terms of the way she's built. She's uh, one that gives you such a good look, but she still has a good body. Uh, one that's still good in terms of her hip and still has some genuine width to her. She stays maintained herself pretty square to the ground as she goes to be that freaky right up through the bottom side of her throat latch and her jaw and where her neck sets and down through her chest everything proportions pretty well 
Lots of balance, lots of good. Congratulations, young man. Very good job. Good heifer here in second in terms of one that uh, you like this one a lot better when we get her out into motion. She gathers herself up. We get her on a stand and maybe wants to come apart. She's stout her bone and maybe a nickel wider built than the one right in front of her, but not the balance in this one. One that gets just a little bolder through the point of her shoulder. One that's just a little rawer and coarser in terms of her, her joints and the way she's built there, but one that with some time as that one softens, young man, we get her broke a little better where she wants to be a show cow hey there's lots of quality and lots of good in that one congratulations just good solid livestock here an old yeller that comes here in third uh, one that's a nickel round built and she's a little plainer up to her front end but she's big centered the fundamentals are pretty good on this one her uh, feet and legs are good uh, one that i just thought was a logical fit for me to find third uh, she needs to be better looking we need to make that one a nickel more attractive we need to make her a little square out her hip but big body got some doability to her still good structured some longevity built into that one young lady's done a nice job good ever comes here next in terms of one that's long and extended and really attractive this one just doesn't fit together quite as well today just doesn't balance as good one that gets a little uh, rigid in her hock and we need to square her up as she goes right away we need to blend that one a little better coming out of the back side of her shoulder and right on down her top line but young man, you've done a nice job with a good heifer there as well. Good heifer comes here next in terms of one that's just fundamentally pretty good. She's got some length, she's still extended, she balances okay, has some extra width and bone. One that just gets a little rigid when we get her out on the move on both ends. One that's not quite as secure in her hind foot. We need to set that one's tail head down in her. We need to soften that one from her navel back into her flank. Good body type and kind in this one comes next. She's moderate and she's big centered and one that has some width to her. This one just simply gets too straight on both ends. Need to change her in terms of the way she's built up front. We need to change that one in terms of her hip and her pin set and change that one all the way to the ground. But good female in terms of moderate, big centered, and still has some good to her. Young lady's got one comes next that when you get them parked and you look at them on the stand, you want to like this one a whole lot. Uh, good looking, good balance, body shape is good. She's as good as any in this class in terms of width and true stoutness coming out of the back side of her shoulder. Still does that with being maternal in the center of her body. She just simply got to go better. She simply got to get another gear, put her rear leg down a little more coordinated like, and stay more relaxed in her spine. We need to change that one in her movement. Young lady, you get her parked. That one's awfully, awfully nice. The blue one comes next. Uh, a lot the same. Body type and kind's good. She's moderate. Has some body shape to her. One that gets a little too straight up front. Doesn't balance quite as good as those cattle right in front of her but still lots of good in her as well big stout gray one comes next and this one's extra heavy duty in terms of bone and width and stoutness we just need to smooth that up and and redesign all that she gets a nickel straight on both ends maybe just a nickel more terminal in her look than she does maternal but you like them heavy bone and big hip hey you like that one you can run her up there a little higher than i did young lady's done a nice job with her really a long bodied extended one uh, that's extreme in terms of her length of body and her look she gives you we just simply need to give that one more true shape all the way throughout but a good class of cattle congratulations thank you mr murphy up next will be class number five prospect breeding heifers more weight wise 776 and 797 here's the results on class four. First place 12569 kiana Langton, leroy colorado Second, 12637, Jackson Walker, Greeley, Colorado. In third, 12628, Mackenzie Swanamere from Ignacio, Ignacio, Texas. In fourth, 12597, 12597, Keith Page, Akron, Colorado. In fifth, 12515, Connor Booth, Torrington, Texas. In sixth, 12593, Kim O'Neill, Silt, Colorado. Seventh, 12588, Lucas Mullins, Sterling, Colorado. In eighth, 12496, 12, Aubrey Weiss, Genoa, Colorado, in ninth place, 12-630, Abby Thornburg, Bassett, Kansas, 10th, 12-461, Ridge Notwell from Saratoga, Wyoming. Program placings for Class 4 are 3, 8, 10, 4, 1, 7, 5, 9, 2, 6. Once again, 3, 8, 10, 4, 1, 7, 5, 9, 2, 6. Once again, Class 5, prospect breeding heifers in the ring. Weight range 776 to 797 with Brent Murphy, our judge from Houstonia, Missouri. Once again, we'd like to thank the Andis Clipper Company, family-owned business out of Sturdivant, Wisconsin. 
They're giving each of our class winners for the Prospect Heifer and Steers. First place gets XL 5-speed clippers. Second place gets the Andis Blue Ribbon Blade. Third gets the Andis Cool Care Plus. The Andis Company is proud to sponsor the Nash Western Stock Shows, Prospect Steer and Heifer Shows, and very supportive of the 4-H and FFA youth programs nationwide. Here to represent Andis and give out those uh, awards for first, second, and third, the National Training Advisor, Mr. Kirk Steerwalt. And today's total... Once we go through all the shows, they're giving out $15,000 in awards and prizes. Once again, thanks to Andis Clipper Company, the family-owned business from Sturdivant, Wisconsin, at Mr. Kirk Steerwalt. an outstanding set of uh, steers out here in your prospect steer show and I think there's three four five six deep in this particular class at all awful awful good and this baldy steer uh, we walked out in the ring here you want to talk about drawing one that just is built as good as you can make one man his feet and legs hit the ground perfect each and every time he is so chiseled in terms of his chest floor and so tight in his throat latch he's so eloquent in terms of the top side of his shoulder and then his neck and how he blends in together and he's so smooth uh, and and just eloquent in terms of his rib shape and his top line i think that's an outstanding calf there to win this class i think the one that's most like him in type and kind is the young man's yellow steer that comes in next not take anything away from this one he He's maybe not as chiseled in his parts as the calf that wins the class. Boy, he's a big forearm steer, got a lot of mass and bone about him. We put him in motion every now and again. He wants to just get a little unorthodox how he handles his hind legs every now and again. But that's a bold made steer that's got a lot of internal uh, center dimension about him. I like to give him just a shot down low compared to the calf that wins the class. But I think an outstanding pair of steers. It's calf for calf, pound for pound. Here's a really, really good one, and I like this one. He's given up a lot of hair in this class, but when you study this one for what he is and as wide as he is right behind his blades and out his loin and out his pin set, that's a really good calf, and uh, just one that's hard to punch a hole into. He's solid in terms of his top line. I like the width that he has in terms of out when you get behind him. He balances up real good, and he gives you a really good look. I think that's an outstanding steer to run third in this tough class. Young man's calf that comes in fourth, the black steer here, I like a lot of things about him. If I could bring him together, he gets a little out in his shoulder and a little wider in his chest. He's a nickel rib long for me out here in this particular lineup in terms of how he handles himself together in his top line. But he's a big bodied steer. It's got a lot of extension about him in terms of his muscle and a lot of depth of body. Outstanding steer. Young man brings you a really good one here next. He's solid. There's not really anything wrong with this cap in terms of how he's built. He did, When you get behind him, he's maybe not the widest pinned one. He maybe doesn't have the, quite as much shape and mass and width when you get right behind him. I do like the silhouette of this steer. I think he's sound on his feet and legs. He's soft in terms of his heart and his center body and his flank. Young man does an outstanding job. We give this one more punch when we get behind him and just maybe neaten him up just ever so slightly up through that front one third. I could get another notch or two out of that one. That's an outstanding real complete calf. I think calf that comes in next is like the calf in front of us. Maybe not as neat made as, from, as the calf in front of him but he's similar in terms of type and kind and body type. I like his depth of body. Uh, he's one that just sometimes wants to labor when we put him in motion but I think his angles are right I think he's sound in terms of his feet and legs he's got a lot of mass about him maybe not as attractive up through his front one-third 
Young lady's calf that comes in next. Stout made, bold made steer. Just like to Gabby uh, tone him in in terms of his structure a little bit and tone him in terms of his chest floor and his shoulders. But a good steer in his own right. He's got a lot of muscle. Young man steer that comes in next. One that's built really good. He's smooth made. He just doesn't have the overall mass and power of the cattle in front of him in terms of his bone work. A frailer made steer in terms of his rib and his bone and his muscle. But a good looking one that balances up really good to round out your class. Outstanding set of exhibitors and a cattle in that particular class, if you would put your hands together for us one more time. Up next will be our last class before our last division. It'll be class 28. Weight range 982 to 1089. 982 to 1089. Here are the results on class 27. Prospect steers. First place 12280. Cash Pratt, Pueblo, Colorado. In second, 12143. Jagger Horn from Anson, Texas. In third, 12040. Cassidy Carroll from Santa Rosa, California. In fourth, 12041, Cassidy Carroll, Santa Rosa, California. In fifth, 12221, Ty Martinez, Loving, New Mexico. Sixth place, 12168, Caden Kaysen from Wheatland, Wyoming. In seventh, 12416, Abigail Wetzel from Yuma, Colorado. Eighth place, 12220, Ty Martinez from Loving, New Mexico. Ninth place, 12415, Kiona Yeager from Fairfield, Montana. Program placing for class 27 are as follows. Five, three, seven, two, one, nine, four, six, eight. Once again, five, three, seven, two, one, nine, four, six, eight. Once again in the ring, this is our judge Shane Meyer with Stonewall, Texas. And with our class 28, the final class, 982 to 1089. After this, we'll have our Division 5 Prospect Steer Championship. It'll be first and second from classes 24 through this class 28. After that, Grand Champion Prospect Steer Selection and the top five overall. Another good class and very competitive and with that lots of variation, lots of differences. And we get down into the middle of this class and lots of structural issues and before we get to those cattle, I'm not going to tell you, uh, I told you earlier, I'm not a very sharp guy and I'm not going to be able to tell you uh, which structural imperfection is worse or better. I'm going to tell you we need to change a lot of those cattle down there uh, and uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but but uh, good, good class, very competitive, uh, lots of quality all the way through uh, this yellow one here uh, we talked about it earlier quality from nose to tail I think this one excels uh, I'll be the first to tell you for modern day times of what a lot of people think breeding heifers are and the way people want to describe them today I'm gonna say this one's a little rounder shouldered if you want to call her that uh, she's not as uh, as sleek right through there and through the shape of her head as maybe what we call ideal but from their back that thing is big centered and that thing has a right 
right kind of body shape. That thing is built the best from nose to tail in terms of her angles, in terms of the way she gets out and goes. She does that with some extra width. She does it with some extra stoutness. I'd love to make that one a nickel better looking up front, change her right in the center of her face. But I think that one's got the most positives. She's the easy place for me to start. The black and white one comes next. I love her type and kind, and I love uh, the, the cow look. She's a little looser built than the one right in front of her. She's a little more extended. Uh, our next set's a little higher in this one than the one right in front of her. I think where this one needs to uh, gets into second, this one gets too far forward in her shoulder and her knee. We need to set that one back uh, uh, and let that angle be better. Let that relax her when we get her out into motion. She wants to get a little softer in her top, get her tail head yanked up out of her, not quite as coordinated. If we can set her knee back and set her front shoulder back, I think that one grabs the gear. And that's a logical place for me to start in this class as well. I love this one here from her hip forward. Uh, from, from her hip forward, this one wins every day of the week. From there back, we need to change her in my mind. The way I like cattle, this thing is dead set, good looking. Her neck sets high. She's beautiful in her chest, beautiful up through her head. She's got body shape. She comes to us pretty skinny as well. I think we need to square this one up. Uh, tremendous right there in her hip and in that thing's rear leg as she drives right away from us. We need to open her up in her pin set, square that one up, make that one a nickel more genuine as she goes. Young man, you've got a good one. You've done an excellent job with her. That's where I'd like to see her better. Good Hever comes here next in terms of body type and kind. We get this one on the stand. She balances, good looking, square built. Need to let this one get off her rear leg a little better. Need to set her tail head down in her as well. The Red Hever comes next. Here's one that's a little stouter bone than the one right in front of her. One that gets out and goes good enough. Gets a nickel planer in terms of her neck and her throat and her head. One that maybe runs out of some shape coming right out of the backside of her shoulder, right in her forerib. I'd love to just open that one up and give that one a shot more shape she's square coming and going still balances and gives you a nice look you got a real nice one here a young lady's done a good job with and put this one out into motion she gathers herself up and gives you a nice look her balance is good she's got body she's got width we get that one on the stand she wants to get up in her top and we need to stout her coming out of the back side of her shoulder just coordinate her a little bit there we can also set her back in her knees she wants to get rocked forward a nickel much for me good heifer i moved up here comes next and this one uh you get a good look of her and then you get three that you need to see them better uh but uh, i think the quality is good in this one she needs to just want to come to town and be a show heifer. She gets a little wadded up when we get her stopped. She gets up in her spine, tucks her legs and dumps her pins a nickel, shoots her tail head up at times. When she gathers it up and goes, she gives you a nice look. She's very well presented, got good balance, good heifer there. Good one here in terms of moderate, big centered one. This one's got a good look. She just gets a nickel straight on both ends. She's too straight in her hock. We need to stouten her up at her foot and her ankle to match the stoutness she has up high, but a good heifer there. Oh, Yeller is real heavy duty here in terms of bone and stoutness and width and lots of that in her. For as stout as that one is, I wish she had more shape right in the center of her body. She gets a nickel flatter coming out of the back side of her shoulder. She gets a nickel tangled up in terms of going right away and how she goes on her rear leg. A pair of moderate ones here that come next. Uh, just need to change them structurally. The black heifer's a little better looking. Uh, the baldy heifer's a little stouter. Just need to change those on both ends structurally. Young lady's got a really extended one that just needs more body and more shape. Excellent class, cattle. Congratulations to all of you. Over on the prospect breeding heifers, your results on class number five. First place, 12, 12 5, 42. Hayden Glass, Tato, New Mexico. Second, 12, 506, Addison, Hokuson from Corning, Iowa. In third, 12, 567, Jake King, Cope, Colorado. Fourth, 12, 568, Aubrey Kramer, Orient, Iowa. Fifth, 12, 497, Skyler Vice, Genoa, Colorado. Sixth, 12, 533, Emma Fassett, Durango, Colorado. Seventh, Seventh was 12 5, 32, Brock Fawcett from Durango, Colorado. Eighth place, 12 5, 26, Waylon Dorsher from Cedar Ridge, Colorado. Ninth place, 12 4, 58, Danielle Castleder, Calhan, Colorado. Tenth place, 12 6, 31, Madeline Unruh from Peyton, Colorado. Eleventh, 12 4, 33, 12 4, 33, Randy Clements, Rexburg, Idaho. Rexburg, Idaho. Program placings for class five, five, three, four, six, ten, eleven, eight, two, one, nine, seven, 
I missed the 12th. That was 12-5, 12, Cody Avery Bennett, Colorado. Up next will be class number six, prospect breeding heifers. We have a total of 10 classes, so this is class six. Weight range 801 to 819 with our judge, Brent Murphy from Eustonia, Missouri. Well, have outstanding way to wrap up uh, the last class of your prospect steer show, and it's uh, definitely been a thrill to judge, and I think an outstanding one to land on to win the last class. And here's one that uh, just uh, just hard to punch a hole in this one in terms of when we put him in motion or we stand him still. I think he's the most complete in terms of how he's built, uh, just in terms of his top line. He's got good shape to him, gives you a good look. Feet and legs point the right direction. He handles himself really good. That's probably where he excels the cap in second is when you put him in motion, how he handles his top, his loin, his hip, and then we get behind him the width that he has. I do like the cap that comes in second a whole lot. I think this is a really, really good one. Every now and again, he just wants to walk a little awkward for me. We put him in motion off his hind end. Maybe we could tuck those front feet into him just a little bit better. I think he's an outstanding steer. A lot of substance, a lot of bone there, a lot of mass. I just like the other one when we put him in motion each and every time. Young lady steer, I think it's close for me between three and four, and those are both really good cattle if you want to pull them up and there's some differences in the cattle and I can appreciate both of them I like the mass I like everything about this calf in terms from his shoulder back I like the mass that he has behind his blades I like the mass and that his rib shape has I like the extra added substance that he gives you in terms of his rib and his bone I like to make him just trim him up in terms of his neck lengthening him up in terms of his front one-third. But I think there's too much mass and power and substance there to get him any lower in this class. Now, I do like the look and design and the width and the spread of the calf that comes in next. He's a square-made, wide base steer in terms of how he's built when you get behind him. He doesn't have the softness in terms of his top shape and his rib shape of the calf that wins the class. He probably doesn't have that extra added substance in terms of his bone work as the calf that precedes him in class with outstanding calf. Next, uh, best-looking calf comes to the blue roan steer I think he's the most attractive he needs more body and more uh, softness in terms of his center rib to get him up any higher but I think he's too attractive to get any lower in this class I like the substance and mass and rib and bone and uh, power of this one I just need to limber him up on both ends to get him any higher I think that's a sound functional steer we just need to make him more attractive and balance him up from the side a stout made steer here in terms of his bone work he's really wide at the top side of his skeleton he wants to get a little base narrow in terms of the lower one-third and like to see him handle his hind legs just a little better as he comes and goes black steer that comes in next one that's really a long-sided steer, maybe just a, a little, little too much set to his hind wheels when you put him in motion, wants to come apart in terms of that top line, but one that's got some length about him. Long-sided, easy-doing steer that comes in next, just need to power him up when we get behind him to get up any higher in his class, give him a little more extension up through his front one-third. Outstanding set of steers. If you would, put your hands together for that last class. Up next, first and seconds will be in the ring for Division Five Championship Prospect Steer. First and second from classes 24 through 28. Speaking of 28, here is the results. First place, 12407, Carly Wheeler, Paso Robles, California. Second, 12137, Lexi Hill, Mac, Colorado. In third, 12088, Brenna Flanagan, Angels Camp, California. Fourth, 12173, Dalton Keller, Torrington, Wyoming. In fifth, 12264, Darcy Parker, Delta, Colorado. Six, 12292, Kara Reynolds, Laramie, Wyoming. In seven, 12104, Maggie Novellos from Estancia, New Mexico. In eighth, 12266, Natalie Parks from Calhoun, Colorado. In ninth, 12218, Jalissa Baker, Sterling, Colorado. In tenth, 12238, Emily Miller, Sydney, Nebraska. 
Placings for Class 28 Prospect Steers. 10, 5, 7, 1, 6, 2, 8, 4, 9, 3. Once again, 10, 5, 7, 1, 6, 2, 8, 4, 9, and 3. Up next, once again, first and second, Division 5 Prospect Steer Championship. After this, we'll have our Grand Champion Prospect Steer Selection and the top five. Another really highly competitive class here and a great set of young people. Uh, really challenging up here in these top three because there's so much difference in them uh, uh, as the way, uh, in terms of the way they come to us, in terms of presentation and hair and, and those sort of things. And I think uh, we started there earlier today and, and I'm not going to fall off the wagon. We're going to do it quality from nose to tail. Young lady, that's where you win. I'd love to make that one stouter. I'd love to stout in her foot and her ankle and her bone work up. I'd love to make that one just a nickel truer as she drives right away from you but I think of those top three she fits the best everything proportions right she balances so good she does it with a maternal look uh, she's not as stout as the two right below her and I'll promise you I'd love to fix her there but I think just in terms of quality of breeding cattle this one here suits me the best congratulations young lady the one here in second you like them big boned and you like them stout featured this one's it and maybe maybe in that last division maybe suits me a nickel better than she does here uh, but I think with that once you get past that extra stoutness of bone and feature and that one goes right away from you there's no distinct width difference or she's she's probably a nickel narrower in terms of her underpinning than the one right in front of her I think the biggest thing with her is we need to relax her in her spine that thing needs to go better we need to set her neck set up in the top side of her shoulder make that one a little more attractive a little more maternal in her look I really like a lot of things about this one in third she kind of combines a lot of things to the two right in front of them but she's got one thing that I'd love to fix her and I, I I'm a sucker for it they got to be pretty good I need to make this one more genuine when she goes right away from me I need to change her rear hock and her rear foot and how it hits the ground but that one's got a good maternal look she's still attractive enough one that has some extra width she's stout coming out of the back side of her shoulder she's got a maternal look to right in the center of her we just simply have to make that one more genuine when she goes right away from me young lady you've had a great time you've done an excellent job congratulations on a good female good one comes here next in this baldy one that's got a lot of good pieces she's good looking and heavy muscled and one that has extra shape just needs to fit together better just need to balance that one she gets a nickel rounder in her hip maybe a little harsher right through the center of her body need to give that one more shape just blend her better the next pair are both long bodied and good looking the black and white one's just simply wider built and stouter bone that's that's what separates this pair she's attracted Active, up headed, has body and balance to her. We need to redesign her a nickel in terms of her front shoulder and her knee. We need to stout her in her pin set, but a big boned one that's good looking. A really good looking one comes here next one that's so fresh and attractive but with that we just simply need to make that one wider built in terms of her underpinning from chest all the way back we need to stouten that one up in her feature you've done an excellent job presenting a high quality one there as well good pair comes next young man's got one that just balances better in her underline has more true body shape she's leveler in her hip than the one right below her she's still attractive we just need to square that one up and redesign that one a nickel in terms of her neck set and right up through the bottom side of her throat but a good heifer there stouter bone one comes next it's got more muscle one that gets a little softer in her top line a little rounder in her overall makeup we need to give that one a shot more body as well great class of cattle better set of young people congratulations to all of you well, on the conclusion of our uh, prospect division the last division of your prospect show here uh to say again uh the the quality of the of the exhibitors and the quality of this of the steers have been second to none and I wouldn't expect anything less when you come to the National Western and exhibit at such a high level and you got people from coast to coast and all over the country exhibiting at, at such a top-notch quality show uh, with that said 
Uh, we're going to go four deep in this particular division again. Uh, we're going to get your champion and reserve out of here, and then we'll get your top five overall in terms of your uh, overall uh, lineup. I'm looking forward to seeing how everything stacks up in there. I think there's a cap out here, and it's if you've been wa watching me ringside, trying to get some cattle with a lot of that, that extra look about them. Uh, this is a show, and so we got that extra presence about them with that extra rib shape and that extra mass, and then we can put it together on a sound uh, product in terms of their feet and legs and with that extra added mass and, and good doing ability in terms of growth and some uh, productivity later on down the road. If you would, put your hands together. I will get your champion, your reserve, and your third and fourth out of this particular division. Congratulations all the exhibitors. I think we got a lot of competitive cattle out here. The best one that suits me best for reserve in this division is young ladies out of the last division. Out of last class, you'll be reserved. Congratulations. As we get out here to pick your uh, third overall in this particular division, I think it gets close in, in my mind. The one that best suits me the best and next in this deal will be the young ladies black steer out of the class three. Congratulations. And I don't think we could leave this young man's gold steer out of the top four in this division, a powerfully constructed steer. Congratulations to him. Good job. There's results on the Division 5 Prospects to your championship. Your champion... Comes out of class 27, that is 12280, Cash Pratt, Pueblo, Colorado. Reserve champion comes out of class 28, that is 12407, Carly Wheeler, Paso Robles, California. Third overall comes out of class 26, 12312, Chloe Rogers, Iowa City, Iowa. And fourth overall comes out of class 27, that is 12143, Jagger Horn from Anson, Texas. Up next, we'll rank back our top four or top two as a, as a case we're in the first division all of our champion uh, top finishers I should say top finishers coming back for the grand champion prospects through selection reserve grand selection and then the top five overall
once again as we await our top animals to come back in the ring for the Grand Champion Drive. In the ring on the prospect breeding heifers is Class 7 with our judge Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri. I'll tell you what, uh, lots of quality here all the way through this class and lots of variation up here on the top end. And, and I'll tell you, if we can put these three together and we can land on a spot, man, I'm going to tell you, we'd be hooked up like you've never seen. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, I guess as we get into these three, I, I, I've been as, as – uh, I don't know how you want to say it. My opinion doesn't really matter, uh, maybe except to these young people today. But I, I've been pretty uh, – I've thought as we've got to show cattle, as we've got to this point, over the last few years, maybe we've gotten a point a single trait and a nickel. And, uh, and I guess that's kind of what separates these. Like we've talked about, quality from nose to tail. And there's things I'd love to change on each and every one of them. And there's things uh, that, that's better than the one right behind them or right in front of them as well. But I think with that, the logical one to me to start with is young ladies. Uh, this thing here is extreme in terms of her length of body, in terms of her length of neck and extension. Uh, she is the best there. I'll tell you where else she's the best in this particular set of three, and that's why she wins the class for me. She is dead set the squarest, truest coming and going, and the most flexible doing it. This thing is dead set coming at you. I'm not going to tell you she doesn't need to be a nickel wider in terms of her underpinning underneath. We can make that one a nickel more genuine in terms of width. We can make that one just a notch more shapely coming out of the backside of her shoulder and right through the center of her. But you talk about one that's extended, one that's running gear is dead set square those are big feet that's a long neck that's a long hip and lots and lots of upside in that one that's the one i feel the safest with i'd love to change her in a spot or two i'd love to smooth her up right over the top of her blade when we put her out into motion i'd love to make that one just a nickel wider built coming right at you and going away but i think that one there suits me the best in terms of quality when they came in the young man's hit me awfully hard and i'll tell you what four rib back this one smokes them all not even close big big center 
They're dead set perfect in her underline. I love that. Got a great big hip. Things I talk about. We need more width in them. We need more stoutness in them. All that's good. This thing here gets a little low hung in terms of where her neck sets in the top side of her shoulder. And I think what separates that pair, and it's pretty minor, when this one comes right at you, she wants to get pigeon toed. She wants to get a little uncoordinated in terms of where she sets her feet down. Young man, you've done an excellent job with an awfully, awfully good one. The one here in third, I'll tell you from a body type and kind standpoint, and on the stand, this one pushes them all. This one's good looking and still fresh and big centered. Underline is good. We need to loosen this one on both ends of her skeleton. This one wants to get a little upright and wants to open up coming at you. Not quite as coordinated. She wants to dump her neck, and you can tell she's not quite as comfortable. We get that one out into motion. But you talk about one that balances, one that's square and still gives you a good look. That one does that. This red one here is just pretty basic in her build very very fundamental in terms of quality she's long bodied she has body shape she has width not as attractive as those right ahead of you one that wants to get just a nickel bow legged as she drives right away i'd love to square her up in her hock and her foot but that thing's got muscle and body and still balances good kind right there the gray one comes next a little bigger kind the one that's long and extended one that has body one that still has a maternal look she was the strongest of the next few in terms of her top line and her hip she was better in her hip and her hind leg. Still gives you a nice look. She gets a little straight up front. We need to set her back in her knee. We need to relax that one there. For as big and husky as she is, we could give that one just a shot, notch more shape right in the center of her body as well to match that extra stoutness. Just one that's extended and balanced and one that's uh, pretty correct in terms of feet and legs lands here in this black and white one. She needs more body. She needs more softness there in the center of her, but that thing's still good looking. She balances. Feet and legs are still acceptable enough very well presented congratulations young man we got a nice one comes next it's a little stouter in terms of this black one this one is extra stout and extra square in terms of her hip and her back one that has body this one just needs redesigned in her rear hock and, and to the ground she needs to be more coordinated we need to let her foot and her ankle match all that other stoutness if we're going to bring them that stout it's got a proportion it's got to work for me but lots of quality in her as well good female comes here next in terms of just her type and kind moderate big centered still attractive we need to square this one up in her hip we need to change her in her rear leg as she goes as well we give that one just a notch more flank as we get back into her make that one's underline just balance the nickel better stout built one comes next in terms of width and muscle this one just needs redesign on both ends gets a little uncoordinated gets a little jammed together if you will from nose to tail one that just gets a little straighter we need to set her tail head down in her make that one more comfortable the black cover that comes next a uh, uh, young man's done a nice job with her. She's a little more extended, probably a little more maternal than the one right in front of her. We just need to square this one up in her hip and her rear leg. We need to soften her up in terms of her body as well. But a great class of cattle, better set of young people. Congratulations to all of you. Up next will be Class 8 prospect breeding heifers, weight range 861, 894. In the ring on my left, here's the results on Class 7. First place, 12-5-37, Julia Fry, Johnstown, Colorado. In second, 12-6-26, Dylan Stone, Eaton, Colorado. In third, 12-5-65, Aaron Curley from Denaire, California. In fourth, 12-5-64, Kelly Kirchall, Callahan, Colorado. Fifth, 12-6-15, Whitney, Whitley Schweitzer from Wellington, Colorado. In sixth, 12-5-14, Jackson Wiley from Wellington, Colorado. Seventh, 12-5-09, Bethany Lyford from Kalispell, Montana. In eighth, 12-5-92, Kim O'Neill, Silt, Colorado. In ninth place, 12-6-29, Cade Temple, Bonavista, Colorado. In tenth, 12-6-12, Wyatt Sandell from Sedalia, Colorado. Program placings for class number seven, 4 5 9 2 7 6 one, eight, ten, three. Once again, 4 5 9 Two seven six one eight ten and three, in the ring as I mentioned, class eight prospect breeding heifers, weight range eight sixty one to eight ninety four, with our judge Brent Burphy from Houstonia, Missouri. Back over the other side of the uh, show ring, with prospect grand championship for the steers, our judge once again Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas, a graduate of South Plains College. He grew up on a Hereford ranch in Texas where they had a cow-calf operation that produced 100 head of bulls to sell annually. Also had a show string of open breeding cattle as well as junior show steers. Currently, he owns Meyer Show Cattle. They offer an extensive line of cattle-related services, including hoof trimming, clipping, halter breaking, preparing cattle for shows and sales. He sells about 50 show steers per year and currently owns and manages a prospect, 
Prospect Show Series in Texas that's known as the Battle of the Cattle. His favorite part about the livestock industry is the thrill of competition. He also enjoys the people that he gets to meet across the nation and the great venues he gets to visit. Some fun facts you might not know, but Shane and his family are big Texas Tech fans, so they are definitely rooting for the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes during the Super Bowl next weekend. Shane is a huge fan also of the horse racing industry. Our judge for this grand champion prospect steer selection, Mr. Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas. Well, thank you very much, and it's been a privilege and an honor to come to the National Western and judge your prospect steer show. I've had the privilege of judging here before. I've judged your junior mini Herefords here on the, on the hill, and I've judged your feeder cattle on the yards before and, and have come as a... Uh, an exhibitor and as a parent several times to the National Western and I don't have to tell you guys around ringside uh, the heritage and the history of, of this of this uh, National Western but boy it's been here for a long time and and just to know that somebody a long time ago had the foresight and the knowledge to start something like this and at what it has become from the yards to the hill cattle to the horses to all the species to all the vendors to everything it, that this show uh, has added there is so many things I can't imagine what the staff must go through and, and, and some of the things that they have to trials and tribulations they have to go through I think it would be uh, only fitting if we didn't uh, give the, the National Western, all the volunteers, all the staff members, all the CEOs, the presidents, the announcers, everybody affiliated with the National Western, a big round of applause. Job well done again. You know, we're about to graduate our uh, youngest this, uh, this year, and uh, I think everybody gets in this industry because they're very passionate about it. And uh, I think if you remember why you get into this industry and why you wanted to raise a family and the good things that everything ha this industry has to offer, yes, there's always negative in everything, but we are building a future here. If you look around here, I know this is an open steer show, but if you look around here, this is young people. These are going to be the future of our, of our industry. They're going to be the future of our, of our country. They're going to be the future. They're going to be the leaders. So if, if you build these people up at uh, positivity, there's enough negativity out there, but if you can grasp in your heart to give nothing but positive things and positive feedback to these people I think we've got a great future and I think these kiddos learn a ton of things like I've said before I, other than Sunday school I don't think there's a better way to raise your kids than this industry I'll leave you with this and then I'll go uh, pick you some uh, champions reserves your third and your fourth overall I tried to pick cattle that I like, and uh, my county agent a long time ago said, judging cattle simple, or judging livestock simple, pick the ones you like, and that's what I've always tried to do. Uh, I like them sound, I like them with some presence, I like them with some rib shape, and I like them with some muscle. That's easier said than done, and you guys standing around ringside know that it is hard to get that in this day and age. And we are trying to produce the greatest of great, and each and every time we're asking these animals to do things that be perfect in every way, and that is very, very tough. The selection, you guys went last week or whenever it was and saw all the bulls on display, your future uh, sires of the next generation. And I'll leave you with this before I pick your champion and your reserve and your four, third and fourth and fifth overall. Let's not forget our history. Let's not forget our heritage. But let's not get so caught up on the past that we can't see the future. With that said, give them a big round of applause, and I'll go get you top five. Once again, those comments from our Judge Shane Meyer from Stonewall, Texas. Grand Champion Prospect Steer for the 2020 NASA Western Stock Show, 12 to 80. That's your Division 5 champion. That is Cash Pratt, Pueblo, Colorado.
It'll move 12-407 in consideration reserve. And your reserve grand champion, Prospect Steer, comes out of Class 23 and your Division 4. That is 12300, Emma Richardson from Yuma, Colorado. Third overall, 12-3-10, Riley Rogers, Searsboro, Iowa. That comes out of Class 14 and Division 3. Fourth overall, 12-0-3-7, Kyra Burgraff, Manford, Oklahoma. And your fifth overall is 12-0-35, Cassidy Brimmer, Redfield, Iowa. Back on our breeding ever side, uh, congratulations to all those steer winners. Uh, we were going to take a minute and let them be recognized. Big deal. Congratulations to all of you over there. Uh, a little bit more challenging class here. Uh, lots of variation, and I'm going to tell you, we get into them, and, and I don't mean this. I mean this completely positive. Uh, the biggest thing, uh, we talked about it earlier. We show livestock uh, uh, to make the next generation better, whether it be livestock or kids, and I always uh, uh, stand on the side of making the kids better first. So with that, sometimes we've got to point out where we can make things better. And I think as we get into this class, I think each and every one of these need to be redesigned in terms of structure, in terms of build. I think so it makes it very, very challenging. So with that, the one I thought we've talked about it all day quality nose to tail the one that wins for me is a young man's right here i'd love to make her stouter i'd love to make her wider but i think just in terms of quality this one's the one that we got to start with she's good looking she balances good her hips right her hind legs right her underlying balance is good i'd love to give that one more shape coming out of the back of her shoulder all the way back to her tail but i think that one is the best in terms of her running gear in this particular class in terms of how she gets out and goes she balances she's good looking she's fresh well presented. Congratulations, young man. Nice job. This heifer here in second, the Baldy. You love her type and kind. And on the stand, she'll push that one in my mind just because she is so shapely. She is so big right in the center of her body and has so much true shape and doability built in that one. She's wide pinned and still looks like a female, still attractive enough. 
This one just needs to set her rear feet down and go better. She, uh, that's where we need to change her. She gets just a nickel forward in her shoulder and her knee, but mainly those rear feet. We need to set them down and let her push off of them and be a little more comfortable. I love her body type and kind. That's a big time cow prospect, young lady. Best of luck to you. This gray one here, if we go from underline up, she wins. Uh, in terms of just from her underline up, lots and lots of quality. She's square built. She's big centered. She's still attractive. She's still got extra good width in terms of her pin set. She's square coming out of the back of her shoulder. All those things are good. We just need to change this one in her running gear. She gets too straight in her knee, not quite as coordinated in her rear hock and her rear foot, how she uses it. She gets just a little frailer at the ground to match all that up high. We need to make her foot and her ankle just a little bigger to, to secure that a little better. Change her angles, but lots of quality, lots of balance, lots of width. Good job with that one. Good Hever comes here in fourth just in terms of her type and kind. And when a young man gets this one out into motion, she, she, she lands in fourth. We get her standing still. We need to change her quite a bit. But I think her body type and kind is good. She's genuine in her build. She's not the most attractive. We can change her there and extend her up front. We can stout her out of the back of her shoulder. But I think of the next couple, this one here is body type and kind is right. Her underlying balance is incredible. She looks like a female. Her muscle shape is completely the right kind and I think that's where she goes ahead and lands there she does collect herself a lot better when we put her out into motion than on the stand <clears throat> the young man right here in front of us he's the he's the polar opposite she this ever looks better on the stand when he gets her parked and gets her relaxed she's up headed she's attractive big big backed an extra square there still balances good this one just needs relaxed in her spine set back in her knee just change that way when we get her out into motion she too needs to be stoutened up in terms of her foot and her bone to match that up high but a good female there just a good solid one comes next one that's long bodied and has some width and some bone to her need to change this one in terms of her shoulder and her chest need to stouten her up if she's going to come to us a nickel planer I'm good with that she needs to be stouter coming out of the back side of her shoulder she needs to be stouter in her forerib to match that extra stoutness she gives us long bodied one here that comes next uh, this one holds herself together pretty good in her top line we get her out into motion she still balances good we need to square this one up in her hip and her rear leg we need to stouten that one too at the ground just change how that one gets out in motors heavy duty one comes next in terms of bone and and foot and all that's good and extra muscle just need to change this one's general build on both ends of her skeleton soften that one there but a good class of cattle once again a better set of young people congratulations to all of you up next in the ring of class number nine prospect breeding heifers weight range 897 and 936 there's a result on class number eight. First place 12 561 caleb johnston hobbs new mexico in second place 12 562 danielle Kessler from calhen colorado Third, 12, 599, Susan Pinnock from Berthet, Colorado. Fourth, 12, 581, Brock Miller from Kiowa, Colorado. In fifth, 12, 522, Landon Cogburn from Greedy, Colorado. Sixth, Give me a minute to double check this. My apologies. Let's double check this one more time and just start at the top. Class number eight, prospect breeding heifers, first place, 12561, Caleb Johnston, Hobbs, New Mexico. In second, 12562, Danielle Castleder, Calhan, Colorado. In third, 12599, Susan Pinnock, Berthoud, Colorado. Fourth, 12581, Brock Miller, Kiowa, Colorado. Fifth, 12522, Landon Cockburn, Greeley, Colorado. Sixth, 12642, Brendan Younger. 
Colorado Springs, Colorado. 7th, 12-5-98, Stacey Patton, Frederick, Colorado. 8th, 12-5-89, Megan Nyslink, Nick. Nyslink, Carbondale, Colorado. Program placings for Class 8, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 7, 1, 8. Once again, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 7, 1, 8. In the ring, Class number 9, Prospect Breeding Heifers, weight range 8, 97 to 9, 36. We have one more class after this, then the Grand Drive. Judge once again, Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri. Started a cow herd with his first 4 H show heifer at the age of 12. Currently owns and manages Murphy Cattle Company in Houstonia, Missouri. The operation consists of Angus and Composite Cow Calf Herd. Our judge once again, Brent Murphy, Houstonia, Missouri. Also wanted to say thank you to all our ring help today on both the uh, Prospect Steer and Heifer Shows. I don't have everybody's names for both sides, but uh, on the steer side helping us, I want to say thank you to Sarah Shields, Ashley Anderson, Cassidy Bland, and Aubrey Rye. Thank you, ladies. Once again, we'd like to thank our state arena sponsors for today's shows and then throughout the entire National Western. Before you guys leave tonight, if you're hungry, get some great food. In the South Food Court, you'll find mouthwatering ribs at Big Bubba's Bad Barbecue and everything garlic at Garlicky's and juicy hamburgers all the fixings at Good Old Burger. Great service and great food. Thanks to Big Bubba's. We also want to say thank you to the Colorado Farm Show. First time they're sponsoring here at the National Western. And they are proud to support the National Western and I invite you next week to attend the 56th Continental Farm Show coming up January 28th, 29th, and 30th. That'll be in Greeley at Island Grove Regional Park. Over 300 vendors and tons of educational breakout sessions. In fact, on Tuesday, January 28th, it's Beef Day. You can find a whole schedule and check out an online brochure at CobbledalFarmShow.com. Once again, thanks to the Colorado Farm Show, Big Bubba's, John Deere, and Saunders Construction, our sponsors here in the state of Marina.
Tell you what, a really good class here and really, really competitive. And I'll tell you what, uh, uh, you know, hey, uh, if you like them the other way, I'm good with that. Uh, the thing is, uh, you got to like the kind you like. And I'll tell you what, you got to believe in the kind you use. I believe in this kind. I, I, I've said for years, we need a shot more punch in them. We can make them the most flexible. We can make them good looking. We can make them just as soft in the center of their body. And we can't do that and still put just a shot more width in them, a shot more umph in them. This one does that. I'm not going to tell you she's dead set perfect. She wants to run downhill just a nickel for me. I'd love to jack her up at the top side of her shoulder. But that thing is good looking. She's as flexible as the pair is. She's wider pinned. She's wider built. She's stouter coming out of the back side of her shoulder. She's stouter in her fore rib. That's my kind of livestock right there. Good job, young lady. Good one here in second. And I'll tell you what, if you like this one, hey, get hooked up and that's okay. Her silhouette is incredible If in terms of what you want to deem a modern day show heifer. She's good looking. She's good in terms of her body and her body shape and one that has lots of center to her. She's still good in her hip and on the stand she's got a great rear leg from the side. From a silhouette standpoint her rear leg is extremely good. Now here's where I question that one. If we're going to make them that wide at the ground, coming, and we're going to push them on the envelope in terms of where their rear feet hit and their body wall when they go right away from us, we got to make them stouter coming out of the back of their shoulder. we got to make them stouter in their forerib if we're going to push the limits in terms of genuine width. You, uh, you like them a little softer. You like them good looking. You can take them just a nickel flatter. Hey, this one's yours, the one for you. I like them the way I had them. You like them the way you like. Both of them extremely high quality right there. Black and white one here is extremely good. Big centered and one that's a little more modern or kind, a little quicker. One that's carrying a little more condition today. Not quite that extra look. You just strip all that down and get through that color. That's pretty good livestock. Moderate, big centered, extra wide built. Still gets out and goes good enough. We can make that one more attractive. We can change her nickel and her rear hock. But I think in this particular class, that one sits there pretty good. Hey, this yellow one right here on the stand, lots of quality there. And these are the ones that always get you. You get guys that take one like this that has a movement trouble, and they absolutely implode her and put her on the end. Hey, this young lady's worked her tail off. That hair coat doesn't come for anything. Presentation's good. All that's good. I'm not going to single trait your heifer because her rear leg's not good enough. I wish it was. From there on, there's a lot of quality in that one. That one balances. She's big back. She's square. She's good looking. Man, we got to make them better in terms of their running gear than that. But I'm not going to throw one like that away in this particular setting just because of one thing's not quite good enough. I'm not smart enough to tell you that that's a worse of a problem than one that's a little harder doing. So congratulations on your presentation there. Long-bodied one here comes next, one that's attractive and one that's long and, and still has some true body shape right in the center of her. We need to soften that one, make her balance better in her underline. We need to stouten that one in her bone and her foot, make all that stuff match that big back that one's got. But still good looking. The fundamentals are good on that one. Good solid livestock comes next. Uh, I, I hate the word plain, but this one's a little plain in her build, but that's okay. Very, very fundamentally correct. She's long-bodied. She's good in her body shape. One that's got some built-in doability to her. One that you take them home, breed them, turn them out. Hey, that's good commercial cow right there that can go do her thing. We need to make that one a little more attractive in this setting. We need to balance her nickel better. We need to stouten her up in terms of her bone work. That one's good as well. Extra heavy duty comes next in terms of bone and foot and wit. We just need to simply redesign this one on both ends of her skeleton. A lot like that last one, young lady. You like them big boned and you like them hairy legged. Hey, let's dial that back and get a little more body in them next year and things will go up, all right? Congratulations, good job there. Long bodied one comes next here and one that has some width and has some bone. Just gets a nickel planer in her build up front. Gets, just gets flatter right through the center of her body in this class. Just need to open that one up and give that one more true shape. But once again, excellent set of cattle, better set of young people congratulations to all of you up next our final class in the prospect breeding heifers weight range will be 949 to 1059 class 10 coming in the ring after that grand champion selection here are the results on class number nine prospect breeding heifers first place 12507 m lazy heart ranch torrington wyoming in second 12015 lauren ost from lacine kansas in third 12550 caitlin hart birthed colorado fourth place 12544 Destry Grayman from Wellington, Colorado. In fifth, 12, 5, 24, Nick Davis, Hinsdale, Montana. In sixth, 12, in sixth, 12, 6, 0, 6, 
Chansey Pregler, Harrisville, Utah. In 7, 12, 5, 80, Brock Miller, Kiowa, Colorado. Eighth place, 12, 5, 90, Megan Nieselnik from Carbondale, Colorado. Ninth place, 12, 600, Sheridan Peterson, Lahara, Colorado. Here's the program placings for class nine. Eight, two, three, one, seven, nine, six, four, scratch, five, scratch. Once again, eight, two, three, one, seven, nine, six, four, scratch, five, scratch. Class 10 coming to the ring once again, our final class. Before our grand champion selection, this is prospect breeding heifers. Weight range 949 to 1059. Once again, folks, all of our class winners, first, second, and thirds, have been getting product from Andis Clipper Company, a family-owned business out of Sturdivant, Wisconsin. The Andis Company is proud sponsor of the National Western Stock Show Prospect Steer and Heifer Show and very supportive of the 4-H and FFA youth programs nationwide. Here representing Andis once again is National Training Advisor Kirk Steerwalt. Folks, how about a hand for Andis Clipper Company, the family-owned business for Sturdivant, Wisconsin. $15,000 in awards and prizes today for our first, second, and thirds. Hats off to Kurt Sterwalt and the entire crew. Thank you guys very much. And as we wind down to our last class and the grand champion selection, don't forget coming up tomorrow here in the stadium arena, 9 o'clock, Stock Dog Trials Open Sheep Competition. And then at 1 o'clock, it's the Stock Dog Trials Intermediate Sheep Competition. It's all coming up on the final day of the National Western Stock Show as we close out the 114th National Western, the best 16 days in January, and, of course, the Super Bowl of Livestock Shows here in the Stadium Arena.
Well, tell you what, what a way to end. Uh, lots of quality once again all the way throughout. But this uh, this top pair is good in my mind, and it gets really close. And when we get them good, it's supposed to get close. And and once again, we take a minute longer. And, and one thing I will not do is I will not apologize for taking a nickel longer uh, to, to try and get it as right as, as I can get it for your kids. I know what it takes to get here. And, hey, I know you all ready to go home and uh, just like me, but uh, uh, five minutes for me to do this, what I feel like is right. Uh, I'll never short your kids, I promise you. Uh, they're just as important to me as anything in this world today. So uh, I think this top pair gets really, really close. And I think what separates them is, I think the one that is stouter in terms of her feature and her bone and her footwork, I think she is the most comfortable and she is the best when we put them out into motion. I think that's where she excels. She's looser in her hips. She's better in her rear hock. She reaches and grabs and goes better than the one in second. Uh, she's one that is stouter in terms of her foot and her bone work. She's just a notch wider and sh more shapely right through the center of her body. You bet. I'd love to stout her up right out of the back side of her shoulder, right in her fore rib, just a nickel. I'd love to clean that one up right through the bottom side of her throat. But I think when you take and you get one a little wider built, a little stouter, and she's the most flexible, that's where I got to land. Really, really nice one there. You talk about one from a silhouette on the stand. Hey, if that's what you're about, this one here's the one for you. And, and I'm great with it because this one's high quality livestock right here. This thing got a crazy high neck set beautiful in terms of where it comes out of the top side of her shoulder she's so good right in the center of her body in terms of having true body shape outward shape the right kind of underline and still does that and maintains being real fresh i like that about her she's still beautiful in her hip she's great in her hind leg when we get her parked and we get her on the stand we get this one into motion she gets just a nickel tight right up in her hip and in her hock and i'd love for that thing to grab a gear and get after it and go just a nickel better Better. I'd love to square that one up in terms of from the point of her shoulder to the ground up front when that one's on the on parked. But I'll tell you what, two high quality ones, both you young men, awfully, awfully good job. Just a good, solid, basic one here in, in third. Uh, uh, this one's a little round. We need to fix her tail head. We need to make her a little more attractive. But after that, this thing's running gears good. Her center's good. Built-in doability. I'll tell you what, young man, you'll make a living with commercial cows that look like that. Maybe she's not suited for this gig, but that's still good livestock, and I appreciate it. Longer-bodied one comes next here. This one's way up-headed, way attractive, and still has body shape. This one gets a little forward in her shoulder and a little straight in her knee. I'd love to rock that one back and I think also for that one's size we need to give that one a shot more punch we get right in behind her that one gets a nickel narrow well, I'd love to stouten her up but you talk about good looking big bodied still fresh and attractive good heifer there stouter one comes next in the baldy this one's a uh, big backed and extra wide pinned and has some muscle and has some body shape she has some built-in doability as well. Gets a nickel planer up through her chest and her head. We need to change that one from her navel back into her flank, but good livestock there as well. Long-geared one comes next. Attractive, big bone, one that's extra long-bodied. We need to relax that one in her spine. We need to give that one more true body shape as we get right into her, but still good cattle right there. Young man, you've done an excellent job right there with a good one. She's uh, moderate in her kind. She's big-centered. We need to change that one in her loin. She wants to get a little low in her loin and up in her tail head. We need to make that one a nickel more coordinated as she gets off those rear legs, but a really, really nice one there as well. So once again, great set of cattle, better set of young people. Congratulations to all of them. Here's the result on class number 10. Prospect breeding heifers are in final class before our grand champion selection. First place is a right in in your programs. It's 12, 5, 11, 9, 48. Turner Longmaker from Kellyville, Oklahoma. Second, 12, 6, 0, 5, Cash Pratt. Pueblo, Colorado. Third, 12, 595, Clayton Ostermiller from Platteville, Colorado. In fourth, 12, 641, Caden Wright, Marenthal, Kansas. In fifth, 12, 563, Dalton Keller, Torrington, Wyoming. Sixth, 12, 539, Curtis Jabauer from Grover, Colorado. Seventh, 12, 538, Curtis Jabauer from Grover, Colorado. Program placings for class 10 are three, scratch, six. Five, seven, two, four, one is the right in. Coming back in are your division champions and your top fours. Or excuse me. These are just all your first and seconds. All your first and seconds from the prospect breeding efforts. All your first and seconds coming back in the ring. This will be your top five selection, your grand reserve, and your third, fourth, and fifth overall. 
Judge once again, Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri. Started a cow-calf herd with his first 4-H show heifer at the age of 12. Currently owns and manages Murphy Cattle Company in Houstonia, Missouri. Operation consists of Angus and Composite Cow-Calf Herd. His favorite part about the livestock industry is striving to make the next generation better, whether talking about cattle or kids. His sons are Cole and Ty. They're very active in showing both cattle and swine through their 4-H and FFA projects. Once again, as these come in to finish out the class, our judge, Brent Murphy from Houstonia, Missouri. Thanks once again to all of our sponsors. Thanks once again to Andis, Colorado Farm Show, Big Bubba's, John Deere, Saunders Construction, and the official livestock photographer for the National Western. Check out the pictures taken in the arena at the backdrop and purchase pictures online at showchampions.com. And thanks to all the staff that have worked with us, not just through the shows today, but all the shows since the January 11th when we first got underway. And I see our Senior Director of Operations for Livestock is here, Marshall Ernst. Thank you, sir. Thanks to Aaron Dorsey. Thanks to Clancy and the entire crew. Appreciate you guys up here.
Well, I'll tell you what, uh, as we get to the end of this, before we get any further, give all these young people who've been in this ring today a big round of applause. I'll tell you what, uh, uh, it's truly second to none. And, and kind of like Shane said, uh, uh, there, there's absolutely nothing any better in this world than you can do, in my opinion, than show livestock and be, be competitive. And I'll tell you young people why. And when you get to be a little older, and, and I'm sure not any wiser than anybody, I'm, I'm a simple uh, uh, Missourian and, and a simple guy standing in this building today, I promise you. But I'll tell you this, as you get older, uh, you look back on these things, and these things that happen today, whether you were first or second or third or, or, or towards the bottom, they will mold you into who you are. They'll make you better people. They'll make you better uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, how you deal with everyday life. They'll make you better. They'll make you be able to put other people first. They'll make you know how to, to when it's time, like we've said, when it's time to put the gas on and give it all you got, you go do that. When it's time to reel them back a little bit, we can do that too. Because I'll tell you what, I've talked to every single one of these kids in this ring today, and I'll tell you why I do that. I do that for one reason. Outside of, I mean, I'd talk to that pole right there if it had talked back. But the only reason I talk to those kids is for one reason. Uh, besides, I truly, truly care. I don't ask you how you're doing just to be passive. I ask you because right here in my heart, I care. But I'll tell you why I do. We live in a world where it's pretty easy to hit the green button or the red button or hit enter and maybe not be able to look somebody in the eye and tell them exactly what you're thinking. Okay? Uh, I'm not going to say we got to hate the world and we got to hate technology, but that doesn't mean what's made us great people, what's made agriculture people the absolute best, what's made America absolutely the best. Let's not throw it in the garbage just because we got a new way to communicate, okay? That's what I'm trying to tell you. And as you kids, there's nothing any more powerful than young people looking you dead set in the eye and answering you with confidence. I'll tell you what, I coach a lot of baseball at home. I deal with a lot of town kids. And, man, I'll tell you, a lot of them don't have that opportunity. They don't have that. You talk to them, they're looking at their shoes. I mean, they're scared to death. And, hey, so if you ever wonder how much it costs to get to Denver or go to that show or how long you're going to be gone or what's going wrong at home when you're here and you bring your kids, hey, just remember that's why. You do it to make them better human beings. You make them to to make them better people and to give them every opportunity in this world that us as adults did not have. So with that said, uh, uh, I want to thank the National Western. It's truly been an honor to be here. Uh, it's, uh, it's truly uh, second to none. Uh, you've got the greatest ring help and the greatest announcers and people to run it uh, from top to bottom. Let's give all of them a big round of applause. It's an excellent, excellent deal. The other thing I need to thank, uh, I need to thank my, my family. And, and, you know, I always get to this point, and I've been a firm believer. You get to end the show, and a lot of people, uh, we get to talking about ourselves a lot. And I've always been a firm believer. We get to this point in the show, and from when we started today to now, everything I need to talk about is on that side of this microphone. It's not about me. We're not here for me. It's all about you kids. It's all about your hard work. It's all about your efforts. It's all about the dollars spent to get here and raise these cattle and make them truly better. But I will say, I hope when I say this next thing, each and every one of you that's listened to me disagrees with me. I hope you disagree with me from the bottom of your heart because I will tell you without a doubt, I got the absolute best family in America. And I hope right now all of you are disagreeing because you think yours are better. Okay, I truly, truly mean that. Uh, I couldn't do this without uh, without my family. You know, I leave them at home, and they do a lot of chores. And hey, heck, I've been places. People ask me if I'm even married. You know, uh, uh, I don't. I don't get a. They don't get to come with me a lot. But uh, I, I truly, absolutely. Uh, got the best wife in the world and I got the best kids in the world they're second to none and and I'll tell you what I'm sure they're sitting there with their tablet they're going to critique me when I get home and and they already are but uh uh kids uh, I love you to death uh, you absolutely make me better every day I come out here they make it better they make me better for you all and and my wife does the same so uh, I love you all the bottom of my heart so uh, with that said uh, uh, we you know we, we came up this week uh, we was thinking about that and it's pretty high tech for me to have a sports coat okay I, I got a letter from National Western I don't want to take a lot of your time but I got this letter back about doing this and 
and, and, and I'm going to tell on myself just a minute, but I got this letter, and, and it, it, it talked about all the things they expect of you and so on and so forth, and it said that most of these shows that are required a sports coat, and it had it highlighted on mine. And I didn't have the nerve to ask anybody else because the last time I was here, I didn't wear one of these. And I didn't have the nerve to ask anybody if mine was the only one highlighted because I was in the penalty box or what, but I wasn't going to try it again. So, so we went and got that, and we've worried about all week if it was too big, and it probably is. And, and, and my kids give me a hard time about my bald spot, and, and that's okay too because I'll tell you why. My coat doesn't matter. My bald spot doesn't matter. What kind of shoes I might, it doesn't matter. I want to get this right. In my mind, I want to get it right. I want to get it as right as I can get it for you all. Not for me, absolutely for you kids, and do the very best I can for you. So once again, uh, it's been an absolute honor. Uh, kids, I'll leave you with a couple things. A couple things real quick. Uh, one thing is, when you get in these situations, no matter what it is in your daily life, we get, we get sped up a little bit too fast sometimes. Take a few minutes and just look around at where you're at and the opportunities you got laid in front of you, okay? There's a lot of people that don't get these opportunities, and, and, and that doesn't mean you ought to feel sorry for them. Just, just thrive with the opportunity you get. Don't ever get too busy to stop and look around and wear your heart right on your sleeve. And when that guy comes with you or, or whoever you come to these shows with, you tell them how important they are. You tell them how much you, uh, they helped you. You tell them how neat it is, okay? You do that. Uh, uh, you, always, uh, you always keep learning. You never get to a uh, day to where you don't uh, need to learn something. And, and the last thing uh, I, I'm going to tell you is... Uh, and don't take a single thing of it for granted. Live each day like it's the last one you'll ever have. Live it that way, your heart on your sleeve. Uh, hit the gate doing 98 and learn every day you walk out the back door. So with that said, you guys are off to a great start. I don't need to tell you uh, uh, how to be, but uh, it's truly been an honor. It's been a, an, an absolute great show, both shows. Uh, lots of variation as we bring these back out here. We're not going to reiterate through these cattle. I've tried to describe them to you absolutely to the best of my ability, whether I own them or you own them. So I think it's pretty cool because here's the thing. I heard Shane say earlier about judging livestock, use the ones you like. You know, I've always had a different twist to that, and i got to always use the ones I believe in. i got to use the kind of cattle that I truly believe in. Uh, and uh, today we're going to get to. We're going to use a pet couple that uh, got a shot more punch to them. And with that, they're still just as sound and flexible as the rest of them. They're still good looking. They're still just as soft as the rest of them. And I'll tell you what, that's truly a great attribute, not to me, but to you all as breeders. So it's been an absolute honor. Give all these kids a round of applause. It's been a pleasure to be here. I wish you all the best of luck going forward. It's early in the year. You kids don't give up. It's a long time till right here a year from now, 365 days, I think. I'm not very smart, but I think that's right. But be safe going home. Be safe in your travels. Best of luck. And, hey, don't ever take for granted the opportunity to get to come show high-quality livestock with the people you love the most. Hey, that's something you'll never put a price tag on, okay? Congratulations to all of you. I'll go get you top five. How about a hand for our judge, Brent Burphy from Houstonia, Missouri. Grand champion Prospect Heifer comes out of class number nine, 12507 M. Lazy Heart Ranch, Torrington, Wyoming. Reserve Grand Champion comes out of Class 3, that is 12-456 Jagger Horn, Anson, Texas.
Third overall was 12, 5, 11. That comes out of Class 10, Turner Longmaker from Kellyville, Oklahoma. And fourth overall was 12, 6, 0, 5, also out of Class 10, Cash Pratt, Pueblo, Colorado. Out of class seven comes the fifth overall. That is 12 5 37. Julia Fry, Johnstown, Colorado. Congratulations to all of our prospect breeding heifer participants. Thanks to our judge once again, Brent Murphy of Houstonia, Missouri. About to wrap up our livestock shows, but tomorrow morning we've got Stock Dog in here and tomorrow afternoon as well. Thanks, folks. Be careful on the way home.